All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, so I'm going to be making Missile Command right. in Godot what's from going on, scratch. Everybody? Uh, so I'm oh, going to be making weird. Missile Command in Godot from scratch. Ah, that's weird. So I'm going to be making Missile Command in Godot from scratch. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm trying out a uh, few so new things here weird. today. Here we go. So one of them being uh, trying restream. So I'm going to be streaming on both Twitch and YouTube for the first time. And uh, so I've got both chats open if you want to talk to me. Uh, I made all the assets for Missile Command the other day. It was not very hard, not a super complex game. If you don't know, this is Missile Command. Um, it's a pretty cool, fun, classic game, super easy. And my intention with this, yo, Stockin Rabichev, what's up, bro? How do you pronounce your first name? I know I just butchered it, but um, anyway, so this is, this is uh, Missile Command. You can see it's a really simple game, and my intention with this is to, one, I should be able to make 90% of this game today uh and eventually i'm going to think eventually pretty soon that's actually pretty loud isn't it? uh eventually what i would like to do is to i actually don't have the sound effects so that'll be probably something i'll do tomorrow but uh what i'd like to do is make a tutorial series on this essentially how to make this game so uh, i don't think it'll be too too difficult now one thing i will be changing is that um instead of you see you can, you can see right here they've got the uh missiles actually on these mounds and when you shoot them they go from that mound. Now that is very doable in Godot and it's actually not that difficult I don't think but this is going to be like a, a really really beginner tutorial when I'm done so I'm going to keep it simple and do like one of the um, kind of older classic more classic versions where they're kind of just sitting there at the bottom um, and yeah so that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get started of course we're going to be working in 2D um, okay, so I got all the image files right here. I think the first thing I'll do, actually what I need to do is um, get the color palette, and I don't know where I put that actually. Actually, I think, yeah, actually I think I did. So if we go here, nope, there. Uh, one thing, I don't know if you can do this in Unity, but you can't do it in Godot, uh, but it's, you know, not really a big thing is that adding the color palette, you have to do it manually. So let's see, Godot Missile Commando. No, that's not where it is. Okay, so it is low spec chasm. So if you don't use low spec, it's an awesome way to get color palettes. And I'm basically recreating this with uh, this color palette um, just because I think it looks nice. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and download the 32 image here. Uh, copy image. Actually, let's do you. save image as uh, desktop. Cool, cool. And then now, if I do this, and then go into here, and then go into go missile command dot. Uh, we can go into images here, uh, and then I can grab this and drag it, drop it right there, and that will be our palette. Okay, and it hasn't noticed it yet. You gotta do some stuff to get it. There we go. Nope. Oh, I love when that happens. One of the more annoying things. Okay, let's be back in there. There we go. Okay, so now it's in there. Uh, yeah, some, that's how if you don't, if you have an issue. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> So if we, uh, oh yeah, so I'm not, I'm not gonna say too much about that thumbnail. Actually, let's, let's head back there for a second. Um, but I do want you to know. So something big is coming, you guys. A lot of YouTubers, I can't tell you what it is, we're coming together doing something awesome for Godot. Uh, and stick around, definitely stay tuned to all these. Redefined Game Dev is one of the guys right in there. Uh, he's actually pretty much leading the charge, which is awesome. Uh, and, and yeah, so we've got something really cool for the Godot community, uh, and uh, it's gonna be big, okay? It's gonna be huge, as um, some less than human people would say. So uh, what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna drag this color palette in there like that, and then I'm gonna go here, and you can add, so if you go to modulate, I can use our color picker here and grab, so this is gonna be the background color, so you can grab that, and then you can click here to add it as a color in the palette. So for any color that I want to use, I'm going to do it that way. Uh, now what I'm going to go ahead and do 
is go to project, project settings, and then I think it's in run. I always have problems finding this, but we're gonna go ahead and try to set the background or the default color. Uh, is it in config? Maybe it's in window. No, it's not in window actually, it's in environment. There we go. Okay, default, default clear color, and we'll click this. So that's gonna be our background color for this game, and that's just an easy way of doing that, so that way I don't have to set it in every single scene or make like some kind of uh, you know, cool thing. So you, yeah, otherwise you'd have to make like a global variable or uh, a global scene or in, uh, an auto load scene here to do that. Uh, okay, now, um, so this is gonna be the main game loop scene. Um, yeah, I'll make this a sprite. So instead of this, I'm gonna delete that uh, and I'm gonna add a sprite node here. Yeah, we'll make it a sprite. Do I want it a sprite? So there's a few ways to display textures in Godot. Sprite is one of them. I actually do think I'm going to add a texture rect here. Okay, I'm gonna go click full rect. And then to this, I'm gonna add um, the land thing, right? Like this, okay. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. So the project settings on this bad boy need to be, we actually need to change that. So whatever this is, open this up. So it's 480 by 24. So I actually, if we go to project settings, window right there. So the width is going to be 480. Well, so it's 1920 by four, I believe. Yep, okay. And then it's 1080 divided by four. Okay, and then we set the test, test, the test width and height to 1980 uh, or 1920 by 1080, like that, okay. Now, if we go back in here, we can see that is like that. Uh, and then, I guess I don't want this full rect. I want it as minimal as possible. And so the idea is that's the land there. And now we can already, uh, I'm actually going to, mm, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna add a node, it's weird, 2D, the scene here. I'm gonna change, uh, mixing root. I might make this a sprite. Uh, we'll see. I'm not 100% set on anything right now. Uh, and especially because we've already made this a node 2D. Mm, yeah, okay. I'm going to change this. We're very indecisive today. There's a lot of ways to do things. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to set this to be, we'll set, we'll just actually go offset centered off. And then we'll set this to zero, or not, sorry, not the offset. Uh, transform and reset this to zero, zero. And then what I want to do is. I'll probably just move this down, actually. Why is it doing that? Be nice to me, huh? Okay, move this down here. I guess we could check whatever the height of this. So 24, and we want, so we want the X to be zero, and the Y to be um, 24 minus uh, 1080 divided by four. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, 1080 divided by four equals this. Oh, did that just work? Oh, yeah, and then we need to do minus 24, because that's the height of it. Okay, so now you can see that, uh, based on the bounding rectangle, that it's actually in there. Okay, so there's that, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna say in this uh, game, or you can say like main level I'll do, okay. Say this, our first scene of the game, I, I open that fire called scenes, main level will create a folder main level here okay and then we'll save that okay very nice very nice and then we can run this and then well that shouldn't be happening project product settings forgot something these are i honestly this is some of the biggest bits so we're going to go this so stretch mode here aspect uh and we are going to say keep the aspect ratio and now if we run this um there we go. Now it's a little fuzzy, and that's because we need to. NH Nova, what's up, man? Yeah, I started. Sorry, I just saw that, but I started using Godot about a year ago. Um, basically, when the pandemic hit, about a month after that, I started using Godot. Um, yeah, so I, I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes, and I think that the community is growing to a point where it's much easier to get into it. And it was. Luckily, the Godot engine is so simple itself, and it makes a lot more sense to me than the other engines at the time that I was able to teach myself a lot of things. But now we've actually got uh, a lot of creators making resources, uh, which I think is really cool. 
So what I want to do here is if we go to our import settings, I want to save this uh, and we can go preset 2D pixel. Okay, and that will turn off detect T3 and most importantly, this filter. I can't speak for some reason. That will turn off detect 3D and filter. Uh, and so if we go re-import, okay, uh, and then what we can do is go preset, uh, set as default for texture, okay, and then I'm gonna select all these guys and then click re-import, okay. Now you can see we've got a, a nice pixelated thing and it stays pixelated because we want this, this is a pixel game, we want this to be pixelated, okay. So actually though, the one thing we do wanna do um, is pr we're probably gonna need to move this upward a little bit um, by whatever this is. So click this. And so this is four pixels uh, X, so the Y value is seven. So we need to move, so essentially they're all gonna be displayed at the bottom of the screen. So now we're just going to subtract seven from this. There we go. And then they, they will be displayed there, but that's clearly not gonna be big enough. Hmm. You know what? I, I guess I'll do that really quick. So we're gonna make something. Uh, we're gonna make a HUD scene. So we're gonna add a control. Okay. I'm gonna have this go full rect, uh, and then to this, I'm gonna add an H box container. Okay. And we're gonna put this on the center bottom. This should be. If this is ah, I see. It's because. So we need to do canvas layer. This is something that confused the hell out of me. If you try to add a control to a um, 2D level, what's gonna happen is that your control nodes will no longer be able to actually utilize the uh, anchors right here. So you can't do automatic anchors like full rect. Uh, then we can do this. And I'm going to do center bottom wide like that. Okay. Uh, and then we can add uh, this as a child. So we'll add a texture rect. Okay, then we'll add this as the texture, like that. Um, don't know why it's doing that though. It's also blurry, which it shouldn't be, because I reported it. Yeah, I probably didn't do that. Okay, so this preset 2D pixel, reimport. Okay, set as default for texture. Should be here. Okay, and I don't understand why that wouldn't have done that for all the other ones. Ah, that's why. Okay, 2D pixel. Now re-import. Okay, there we go. Now everything should be imported correctly. I'd hope to get into some actually fun stuff about this uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> but uh, for right now, we do need to get all this stuff working. So uh, we can do, I'm going to click expand on, and I'm going to go to keep aspect. Actually, we'll do keep aspect centered. Um, and then let's do the scale here. And let's set the scale to five, maybe. Oh, I forgot that is sometimes an issue with, uh, yeah, that's sometimes an issue when you're using HBox containers is that they kind of force things to be that way. So the, the HBox containers are trying to make this as small as possible. So I think what we need to do is go to min size, which is that here, hint. Where is that? Size flags, there we go. Nope, that's not it. Where is it? There should be somewhere where you can set the minimum size of something. Grow direction, and then, or I don't know if this will help. Let's click both. Um, margin. No. Huh. That's so weird. I guess that makes sense. But uh, so here, let me try and do it this way, actually. We can just add sprites. And then it won't be able to collapse the sprite. Yeah, Steve Jobs? No way, dude. I thought you were dead. Well, thank you. I'm a... <laughs> That was a horrible joke. I cringe saying it. Um, okay, so let's do this. But yeah, that, that was actually a fantastic tutorial, I thought. So thank you so much for saying that you enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Okay, so I'll undo centered like that. I don't quite understand. Oh, I guess that does make sense, doesn't it? So now if I do center bottom wide, it's still doing that. Okay. Or if we do center bottom, still doing that. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. So yeah, the problem is like those are just going to be way too small. Or are they actually? Yeah, we definitely want them bigger. I'd say like probably three times that amount. So this is going to be the land. And then I'm going to move this up uh, minus 14, like that. Okay. Xbox container, I'm going to go like this. And this will allow us to grab it and put it where we want it. Okay. Now we can go in here and change the scale to three by three, like that. Uh, and we can see those like that. And I'll actually make this like 2.7 by. Uh, 2.7 and then in the Xbox container we can do stuff like so alignment I do want begin but we should be able to set it so that it centers them in it rather than um, putting them up in the top left corner which is what I would like to try and do because um, you can see it's just kind of sticking them right there in the corner uh, and I'd like them to be a little more centered although it's actually pretty easy to do it the other way like just shrink that, you know, but that's a little janky. I like to, if I can, I could probably adjust the margin. I mean, yeah, that's also pretty janky. There's gotta be a way to do that. Cause they're usually, they're usually is custom constants. So separation, this is going to be important eventually. Uh, I guess I'll turn this on and make this like um, 10 right now. And then we can see what that looks like if I duplicate this. Um, Whoa, that's weird. Okay, and then I put this in here. So the Xbox container isn't doing what we want it to do, which is weird. I don't know why that's happening. Does it not work for on controls? I guess it doesn't now, huh? Yeah, I guess the Xbox container doesn't work for non controls, which is certainly annoying. <sighs> It used to, but I just upgraded to Godot 3.3, uh, which uh, the only thing I've noticed is better about it so far in my use is that when you click on something, it, it like sometimes colors it, which I like. I like color coding, but that's, uh, that's about it. So we should definitely text, technically be using texture recs here and then inputting these as the texture. But if we select expand the uh, Xbox container here is going to screw it up a wee bit. So let's see, if I got a rec, can I just change the scale here and go to like three by three? Okay, so that does work, that's good. Okay, um, and then we can minimize the size there. And then we, yeah, and now if we duplicate this, oh, that's weird, why would it do that? Oh, is the Xbox container changing the scale? Oh, I also have my plug here, by the way. In case anyone was wondering. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. So, that is quite odd to me. Let's see that. This used to be a lot simpler than this. Um, and now it's, yeah, so now it's changing that. Let's do this. All right, here's, actually, yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna change this. We're gonna make this three by three. Okay, we're gonna set the min size to the smallest, or the size here to the smallest. And then we should be able to go to, oh, my dog just juiced me. That's yeah, not a good smell. Focus, hint, grow direction, margin. So, you should be able to set a minimum size, and I don't think I should have to do that through code, although I know I can. Huh. So if we go to control, and then properties, it should be like min size. So min underscore size, where are you? Rec size, rec min size. So yeah, oh no, it's right there. I'm so stupid. Okay. <laughs> That's why. Okay, so the size right now is four by seven, it's saying. So if we set this to four by seven, that should prevent it from shrinking. Let's see. Duplicate it. Okay, no, it didn't. But now I think I've figured it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to here, expand, scale and expand, 
uh, and then we're gonna say keep aspect, okay? And then, so we've got our size right here, I'm gonna minimize that, but we're gonna set our min size to times three, and then we're gonna set this times three. There we go, and now, voila. Okay, so now it'll be really easy to, you'll, we'll have our missiles displayed right there um, on the screen, and then you can change the separation here. So I think I want half that, so I'll make that five. That looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, but for right now, this is literally just going to be there for um, spirit, I guess, because the idea is that we're gonna be working on the HUD probably last. I'm gonna get the basics of shooting missiles working first, and then we'll figure out everything else. Oh, you wanna come back up, Bobaloo? To Bobaloo? Okay, okay, okay. All right, so, yeah. And then I do want those to be a little bit smaller than that, but um, yeah, those are the kind of polished things we probably don't need to do right now. So I'm gonna label this HUD, uh, and then I will go ahead and save this as a new scene. Save branch as scene. Ah, uh, no, we will do, and we'll call this HUD control, and then I think I'm gonna save this as new scene. Uh, so save branch as scene, okay, scenes, create folder, HUD control, okay, and then save it in there. So that's eventually almost certainly going to have its own script. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it right there and then we'll get to that later. But as I said, for right now, what I'd like to do is start making the missiles that can shoot, right? Um, so the first thing actually I guess is to make the cursor. So there's a lot of ways to do that. One way is you can go into project settings and somewhere in here, I don't even know where, you can like set the image for a cursor, but that's not how I'm gonna be doing it. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new scene and uh, I just don't need that. We're gonna add a sprite node, okay? And I should have a cursor in here, uh, but of course I think I actually forgot to put a cursor in there. So I'll just make one real quick using some stuff. So we will actually use a node 2D. Ah, no, you know what, I'll do this. So I'm gonna add a control, okay? Uh, and I actually don't need it to be full rect. But to this, we're gonna add a color rect. Okay, just like that. Um, and then we'll go to, so the color, we need to go ahead and grab our thing here again, color, and then we're gonna grab the color as uh, whatever color we want. I think this is gonna be, mm, that might not stand out. We'll do this one. We'll do this hot pink here um, as the color for our color rect. Okay, we delete this. Um, Okay, and then what I'd like to do is make this into a much smaller little thing here. So we know that this is, hmm, I think it's 70 pixels? No, 24, it's 24 pixels high. So just to give some reference. So we go to rect size, and then we can change the, so the Y value, I think five, and then this by like 10 maybe. Um, let's make this uh, 15, I think that looks good. And then, so we're gonna make like a little crosshairs here. I'm gonna have it like animate a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna make copies of them like this. And then for these ones, we're gonna change the rec size to uh, five by 15 instead of 15 by five like that. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm wondering if I even want, I might want this to be change type just a node 2D. Yeah, I actually do want this to be a node uh, 2D. Okay. So it's gonna be crosshair. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna set these ones and we're gonna set the rect position. Uh, the X is zero. We want this to be um, 2.5. Oop negative 2.5 like that okay and then so we'll have this one be top top and this one will be bottom okay and then the bottom one we're gonna go to rect 
and we're going to increase this by, mm, let's say five. I think five will probably be good. Then top, rect, and we'll say the y to negative five. So, oopsies, that's what we actually want. The y values are negative 20, like that. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see what I'm starting to do here. Um, and then what I'll do here is uh, we'll rename these guys to right and left. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to set this in the y to negative uh, 2.5. So it's up like that. I should have done that for both of these guys. Rect negative uh, 2.5. Okay, y, oh, that is y. Song, song, ha. That's how you say that in Thai. I don't know how to say negative. Okay, so cool. Uh, so left, we're gonna get our right crosshair, uh, and we're gonna change our x to be uh, negative five. Jeez, just five, because we're moving it to the right. And then left, we want to move this uh, negative twenty, I believe. Yep, there we go. So there's our little crosshair for us, and it'll be. That actually looks pretty massive. But the good thing about using a node is that we can actually just, or should be able to just transform this. Uh, and then we should be able to just go like 0.5 by 0.5. Yeah, so that's actually great. Um, so we can just rescale it to however we want it to fit, which is cool. Oh, what, something bad happened to the output? What was that? Oh, I'm sure that's nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so that's our crosshair. And then we want that to, of course, follow our node. So I'll add that functionality. And then maybe I'll add some animations next. There's no animations in the actual game here. So if we go here and you can see it's, it's literally just, in fact, theirs is just a plus to find it in a like, uh, little bit in the center that's uh, crossed out there. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, OK. So uh, the way I'm going to make this a crosshair, first I'm going to save it. Uh, uh, and uh, I guess I'll just save it in the main level. We'll create folder crosshair, okay, save it, and we'll make a script, okay, uh, and then it's actually pretty simple. It's literally just gonna be function, and then we'll do physics process. Actually, we'll do process, nope, function process, and we're gonna say self dot, we actually don't do that, so we're gonna say global position equals get underscore global mouse position. And that's it. So now if we go uh, into this and run this here, you can see that it falls our mouse around. Now obviously this is way too big. So I'm going to change the scale to be like 0.25 by 0.25. Ideally I would have just um, made it differently. But okay, yeah, there we go. So there's a crosshair that looks good. Um, and then Oh, of course, our mouse is still there. There is a way to hide the mouse. I'll figure that out in a second. Um, but yeah, so now we've got this crosshair that follows our mouse around, and then we can do stuff like that. So there's a few ways to implement that. One is that, of course, you can add this to every scene you want. All right, so I could just add it as a child here. But what I'm going to do instead of that is actually just make that a, a global. So go to Project Settings, Plugins, I'm sorry, Auto Load. Uh, I was making a tutorial on how to make a plugin, which I'm probably going to release tomorrow. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, easier than you think, you should definitely check it out because it makes Godot cooler. <laughs> uh, yes, okay, so we're gonna go here, scenes, main level, crosshair, and then we're just gonna add the crosshair scene. I'm gonna add it. So now what that means is that no matter what scene we're on, the crosshair is going to be there and it's gonna do its thing. Now I wanna make the mouse disappear because we don't wanna see our mouse on top of that. Um, so we're gonna go to project, project settings, I think, all right, let's see here. Do, 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 config. There's it. So let's see. So we've got icon, uh, native icon window, blah, blah, blah. Exclude splash on you, editor. No. It should be in run. Let's be out. Okay, whatever. Godo, hide mouse. This is probably something really easy that I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out myself. Input those house mods. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, don't know if this will work, but 
that would be something that you could pretty simply put in your crosshair script here is just in the ready function of this we would just put this right because I never want that to be true I might not do this this way because we might want it so that when we're in the regular scene that that doesn't happen there we go and so now we don't see the mouse so that works perfectly uh, and then this falls around the screen and we can do that cool okay so now uh, I think we actually probably will add a little more to the crosshair. Um... Actually, no. Yeah, I was going to have the crosshair actually handle the input. Yo, draw central. What's going on, bro? We are making missile command. And uh, do you know what missile command is? Because I feel like some people don't. <laughs> I don't know how old people are. Um, get some Discord messages. Oh yeah, so something big is going on. Draw central. I think are, are you, you're still new. You're still fresh. Everybody fresh. Uh, I didn't add my mic to this, but check this out. So that's a little teaser image um, for this. Uh, I can't tell you what it is actually. I almost ruined it. <laughs> uh, so we're not revealing it yet. We're gonna reveal what it is in a little bit. Although you could probably guess, and it's a big event for creators in Godot, uh, and I'm actually working with a lot of other people who are uh, other YouTube channels like uh, Redefine Game Dev and Runjin, uh, as well as Bitbrain, and uh, among tons of others, Canopy Games, and uh, yeah, it's going to be really awesome, it's going to be a huge event, and yeah, so we're trying, today's the first day where we're starting to like tease it, uh, and then we should get more and more into the details about what it is, how cool it's going to be, um, and yeah, so uh, if you thought that was Epic Man, just wait till you see the teaser trailer I made for it. I've I've been making all the the graphics because I just I really enjoy doing that, um, which is why I actually yeah I don't know I mean I don't do too many animations but dude I, I I love art it just takes me too much time I love like everything about game dev, um, uh, even the music and sound effects although they're the most frustrating for me because I'm so terrible at them it takes me like my efficiency on making one good sound effect is so dismal that it's like depressing um <laughs> but art you know it's not bad i mean i made all these assets myself even though it's it's like six pixels okay so any hooser now what we want to do is start making the missile scenes for us to shoot i think i am actually mm, so in the actual game here if we go here uh and let me just close these tabs uh you can see that the missiles are actually just like like they're non-discernible kind of blobs so i might just use the enemy projectile here let's go to import and make sure okay so it's it's yeah it's imported correctly so i'm going to go to yeah actually we could do it this way we could actually do it this way uh, i'm going to open up my design studio program right here and change something uh so we're going to go to file open hopefully that works I've been having some issues since I upgraded this program. If you don't know, this is an awesome little program called, uh, sorry, I'm like not paying attention to myself. Uh, Affinity Designer is 25 bucks, you own it for life. Well, I think it's 45, but it goes on sale like twice a month. So uh, it's a vector design program like uh, Adobe Illustrator, though I like I prefer it having used both. Um, okay, so we're gonna go right, actually this is what we, uh, I wanna open right now. Uh, and then I wanna open up this one. Okay, um, and then we're gonna go right here. So this is uh, four by five pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this. So we're gonna anchor the page, get rid of that, and go four by five. Okay, oopsies. We need to do this, and now do four by five. Okay, there we go, okay. Uh, and so the idea that I'm gonna have here uh, that I'm going to have here is we'll go to pixel, click this, and then I want to select, well here, I think I added, yeah, here's the chasm palette. I don't know if this is a pure white. So we're gonna add this, and then we're gonna make this white. And if something is white in Godot, you can change the color of it without even using a shader, which I don't know how to do because it's kind of hard and I don't want to spend the time to teach myself. Okay, so I'll save this and I'm gonna export this. Um, and the idea being that now we can make enemy and friendly missiles using the same image, uh, which is just a tiny little thing. So we go to documents, 
do code, get on missile command, project files, images, and where is it? Enemy projectile.png. Go ahead and save this and replace. Okay, and now I should be able to quit this. Okay, and yeah, there we go. It updated, it's white now, uh, and we're gonna make our first scene. So, um, so the way this is going to work is that we're gonna have a scene that spawns, it shoots towards wherever you clicked, and then once it hits like where you clicked essentially, then it's going to disappear and it's going to spawn an explosion scene. So this is actually just going to be a sprite. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna use this as the texture for that sprite, like that. Uh, and then we're gonna call this missile. Okay. Uh, and then I can probably, so if we look at this here, So it looks like, yeah, they're using the exact same trails even type, we're just changing the color. So that makes it, and these are actually white in game, both for them, although I think sometimes the enemies are green. Um, but I would like to make mine the same color as these. So what I'm gonna do is go to visibility and then grab this, and steal that color right there. I'm gonna add that so we have it, okay. And then uh, I'll do this one because he's got it right there. Ah, we want to then unmodulate there. Grab this. Okay, and then grab this green color. Okay, I'm going to add that right there. Whoa, that actually looks... That is really cool, <laughs> the way he looks with that color change. You, might see, you can see that in, in the actual game, something they do, which I think is really cool, is that, like, I don't know, but, yeah, the color changes throughout the game. Uh, and so that's something you can actually pretty easily do in Godot, but uh, I don't know if I will be doing it that way. Um, okay, so we've got the missile class here. I'm gonna go ahead and save it as, well, yeah, we'll go to uh, main scene here, main level, and we'll say uh, missile. Okay, and um, we'll save this right in there. And then the idea is that, hmm, I'm just, I'm, I, I actually am just gonna make two different scenes. So I'm actually gonna go, I was gonna make one scene for both the uh, uh, enemy missile and your missile, and then you just choose like basically enemy or self, and then that would change some things like the speed of it uh, and like stuff like that. But I think there's gonna be enough differences where it's fine to make two scenes. Um, and yeah, ideally that's what you do. So we'll go here to main level missile, Okay, I'm gonna rename this to missiles. Okay, and then if we go here, I'm gonna rename this, this to player missile. Okay, cool, and then I'll do the same thing here. Player missile. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we're gonna add a script. Should be adding it to the correct thing here. I'm gonna change this to empty. Okay, right, right there, that's great, okay. And then all we're gonna have this do is we're gonna do function physics process delta, and we're gonna say um, self, we actually don't need to do that, global position um, plus equals uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, vector two dot right times, uh, so we need to get a speed here. So I'm gonna make a constant variable here called speed. Speed, whatever the missile speed is. Uh, you could even make this an export variable if you wanted. Uh, so constant speed, uh, let's do, so things technically only 400, so let's do like five, let's do 10, let's see. Hit, it's pretty fast when you're on this one. So plus speed, okay. And then ideally what will happen is we'll just now move to the right um, so we'll do this, and then we'll say right here, rotated, sorry, dot rotated rotation. Okay. Now, if we go ahead and run this, that's pretty fast, that's pretty good. I think we do actually want it faster. There, okay, save. That's, all right, we, wait, oh. That's why, I was like, that's weird, it got slower. That's pretty fast, and I think that's about as fast it was going on the thing there, okay. 
This might actually be a little bit too big. That's that's pretty good. So if we, I'm trying to match the speed that. No, that's definitely too fast. I think 10 is probably good. We'll stick with 10. Okay. So, the idea is that now all you all you have to do is spawn uh, one of these guys, and then it will move at the speed in whatever rotation you put it. And we'll be defining that from whatever is the shooter. The shooter defines what you know direction angle we spawn this guy at, and then he just moves in that direction. And then the other thing we need to do is give him a, a target destination. So we're gonna say target. Oopsies. It's gonna be var target underscore position you can just say pos equals vector two dot zero like that okay and then we're gonna just say right here we're gonna say if um, self yeah self yeah I think that's supposed to be. so we're just gonna say if global position um, is we'll say greater than uh, target Position. Oh no, you can't do that. Hmm. Here, let's see. I, there's. Let's see. So let's do. There is like a vector two. There we go. There's a way to compare them. They have a function because you can't just do is greater than is equal to stuff like that because it's a tricky business with vectors. But there is something you can do here. Uh, where you can compare vectors with this thing and say is almost like you know whatever so aspect blah 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 distance square to distance to oh there we go we do distance to okay so we'll do that hmm yeah we'll just do that so we'll do distance squared to distance to so we'll say, say if global position dot distance two and then we'll say target position is uh, less than we'll say like 16 oh no our, our speed is 10 so we'll do like 12 all right then right now we're gonna pass but then what we're actually gonna do is kill ourselves so I'm gonna write a function called die here okay and then we're gonna do a function die okay and then pass. And so we're gonna make the, um, the trail coming off of it. There's two ways to do that. One, you could use, uh, what's it called? My girlfriend just got home. Ooh. So one way you can do that is that you can use particles. The other way you can use a line 2D node. And I'm gonna try using a line because I think that'll be a little more authentic, but I don't know if you can make it un-anti-aliased. I've never, I've never done that, which would, you know, like the pixel line here. I'm assuming you can't, but um, if not, I think the particle should work just fine, even though it'll be a little bit different from the game. Okay, so function die. Uh, right now, we're just gonna put Q free, okay? Uh, and then eventually what we're actually gonna do is tell it to spawn um, a explosion scene, which I'm gonna make right now. Um, well, actually, before we do that, I think I should enable shooting. So in the main level, what I'm gonna do is actually just enable all of the controlling from right here. So I'm gonna add a, a, a script here, and we're gonna say uh, function, I think it's just input, yeah, yeah. Okay, so function, input, event, and we're gonna say if event equals equals, and then UI, let's do project. Okay, let's do just to make sure I know what I'm doing. So if I go print, this is actually probably the easiest way to do this. So print event, okay, and then if I run this, uh oh, why is that something different every time? <laughs> why is the mouse click different every time? Okay, so project project settings, uh, input map. Oh no, I don't want to add one. Which one's a mouse? Enter, device, cancel, focus next, preview, blah, blah, blah. It's right, up, down, page. What's, there should be like a mouse press. I don't know if that is UI accept. Um, 
Oh, I think we can just do that. If so, we can say if event equals equals input event. Yeah, we can do that. Mouse button. There we go. Okay, perfect. Then we'll say print shoot just to make sure that this is doing what I think it's doing. Why? Why does that not work? Okay, so is works. That's fine. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually make it shoot, of course. We have to determine like where we want these to be shooting from. And, and of course, in the game, it's shooting from any one of these locations. Um, so I think we should equally shoot from the right or the left. Um, yeah, I think that would be fair. So we'll have the left here and the right there. Oh, no. What? There's a big... Oh, no. She's not doing well, dude. She's, it's not diarrhea. Well, she can't hold it. Yeah, my dog has some uh, gastrointestinal issues right now, folks. So oh, no, she just not. pooped on the carpet. What? Can you throw it in the toilet? Why can't you do it? Because the Well, you have to come entertain the audience. Okay. All right, come here. Just bring the pugs. I have to throw away a turd, I'll be right back. Well, actually, you know what I'll do is just leave you with something pretty cool here. Let me go over here. Enough with that shit. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and make this shoot. So I want it to shoot from either of these two mountains, right? Uh, from any of those positions. So what I'm actually gonna do is just get those two positions. So I'm gonna say two constants here. Constant, um, shoot, or launch. We'll call these launch, underscore, pos, underscore, one. Technically, these should be all caps. Launch, underscore, pos, underscore, one. Uh, and then we'll do right here, constant two, and then we'll set these equal to vector two. Um, these will actually be positions, vector two. Okay, and then we're gonna get these positions right now. So we're gonna go into our main level here and see what position this is exactly. And it looks like it's about We'll do 227.42, should be fine. So 227.42, okay. And then the second position here uh, is going to be over at this one. Wait a second, did I shift the whole thing over? Why did I do this? Land. So wait, which one's? Okay, good, good, good. This one's messed up. Somehow messed up this one. Um, they move this. They can't move that. So, just do full rect. There we go. Okay, that fixed that. Okay, so that means that that's still good. And we want to see what this position is. Uh, and this looks like 225, 457. Okay. 225. Uh, 457. Okay, and in fact, I'll just make these both. Uh, no, it's gonna be different heights. Okay. So, now what we're gonna do is actually make this shoot. So, we're gonna go right here, say variable, and we'll say um, player underscore missile underscore TSCN. Okay. Uh, and we're going to say preload. And 
then we're gonna drag a player missile scene in right here, okay, like this. Um, and then I'm gonna make another function. This can be function spawn underscore player missile spawn player missile, okay. And then we're gonna give it a target, okay. For right now, uh, I also want to do this function ready and then we're going to do randomize like that okay because that's going to be important right here so we're going to say var um, missile underscore ins equals uh, player missile dot instance okay uh, and then we're going to say missile instance dot uh, target position equals target. Okay. Yep. And then we're going to say um, missile, missile instance dot global position equals uh, rand. Oh, not rand range. So this is actually going to be, so we need to do if rand range, um, we'll just go 0 to 10, right, um, is less than 5.0. Okay, then we're going to say, uh, yeah, do this. So we'll say var launch underscore position and then we'll say if rand range equals that then we say uh, launch position equals launch position one and we'll say else launch position uh, equals launch position two now I might make it so that they alternate rather than it being random so right now it's gonna be totally random which it shoots from but I might make it so it goes one two three four like that uh, we'll see this might be fine though um, and it shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't particularly matter. So there's one part, so we're spawning the missile, okay? And then finally what we do right here, after that we say missile, um, missile instance dot uh, bo -bo 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 global position equals launch position, okay? So we've just defined that, right? As either launch one or two, and that's gonna be where it starts out. Now the only thing we need to do is have it rotated so that it points to uh, that. So now we're going to say um, var launch uh, angle equals uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, launch position dot get, or we should just say angle underscore, oh, let's do this, vector two, so that way we can do angle two and then the vector two will be target okay all right and there we go actually I think that might work Let's see oh we're not calling the function <laughs> okay um, that is annoying that it's ah we say hmm because you can hold this down theoretically right now which might be okay, actually. We'll fix that in a second. I'll fix that in a second. So, um, yeah. I, yeah, I should be able to fix that actually pretty quickly. Let's fix these errors real quick. So, let's do this. Do this. Launch angle. Okay, so let's declare we never use. We'll fix that right now. Okay, so this is going to be the angle to the target. Okay. Uh, oh, finally, last thing, very, very important, is to do... Um, add underscore child and then we say missile instance okay so then essentially what we're doing is we're creating an instance of it then we're setting its um, the target position to be what we provide it here which we're going to provide it right here uh, every time we do this and this is going to be so we're going to say spawn player missile and then we're going to say get underscore global mouse position okay so it's going to spawn the player missile uh, and we're going to feed it the global mouse position as the target. So we're going to say its target position is that. 
uh, the launch position is then either going to be randomly selected as one or two, right? And then we're going to get the angle from our launch position to our target uh, by doing this. Uh, and that's where we're going to set the angle. Ah, we didn't do that actually. So good thing I talked it through. So missile instance dot uh, rotation. Nope. Rotation equals launch angle. Okay, so there's the three parts of this. It's getting essentially target position. It's starting position or launch position. Yeah, so target position, end position, start position, and uh, rotation. Okay, and now that might that that might actually work. So that is definitely not working. <laughs> That's so far from working. Um, hmm. Why would that be? Why would it not? So I changed the rotation. All right, so what, what happens though, I'm just curious if um, yeah, let's do land. I want to do this real quick to make sure. Z index, put that as negative one. Okay, and then so if I get rid of this, oopsies, why is it doing that? Okay, that's what I want to do. And then I do this. Okay, so the problem is actually that it's spawning from the wrong place, which is weird. Hmm. So I don't think I screwed this up, but maybe I did. Okay, let's go to main level. Let's go right here. I mean, one easy way to do this is just to use position 2D nodes, but uh, I don't know if I want to do that. So yeah, this should be... I want to try this really quick. So I'm going to say launch position equals vector two dot, um, well, he will do this. We'll say 100, 100, okay. And then I'm gonna get rid of this real quick. And then so if, if this is working how I think it should be working, these should be spawning like right here in this corner, okay. But they're not, which is weird. That's really weird. Um, Huh. Huh, 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 huh. Oh, well, this is, that's why that's happening. Okay. That is actually, um, is that 100 by 100? I think it is. So that's weird that this is not working then. Okay. Picture two, okay. And then I think what I'll do here is say print launch position and then just make sure that that's happening. So that's weird. Why is it happening from up there? It says it's working, like clearly. So let's do this. Global. Yeah, underscore. Yeah, right now I'm not, and I'm actually doing that. And I don't know if you posted that nostalgic leaf like way earlier, but uh, that's because I'm trying to get the start position to work. Here, let's not print this anymore. So I want to just see if I click right here. You guys, I think I'm officially fucking stupid. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. That was that. Okay. And then now let's see. How's it working? So the launch angle is currently not working, but that's okay, because that's the only part I expected not to work right away, because I don't think this is actually getting the correct uh, angle that I want. So 
here's what I'll do is I'll say um, launch angle equals uh, launch launch position dot direction to um, yes you are Abigail um, launch position dot direction to and then we're gonna say target okay and so this will give us a normalized vector pointing to that and then we want the dot angle angle I think I think I think I think let's do search what angle does that's certainly not there we want well here I have vector to open so if we go angle returns this vector's angle with respect to the positive x-axis in radians for example vector 2 right will return 0 okay so I think that's what I want now let's just give that a shot look at that shoots right to it looks great now I think what we need to do is actually go in the player missile here and then change this to less but there's there's some problem potential problems with that oopsies But I'm not seeing them, so that's good. That's very good. So you can see, yeah, now the missiles shoot to where we want. Obviously, there's some problems with, um, but th I mean that's the basics. So obviously, we're shooting too many missiles, but that is going to be handled right here in input, um, and we're also going to set a timer. Um, um, yeah, I think you could really spam this. Yeah, so in, in this, you really can spam it if you want. We just don't want too mouse presses to happen um, event dot is underscore action wait why where is it or is, it? is action it should be just pressed is action underscore is just is action just pressed Okay, why is that not? Okay, there we go. So that, that's what I was trying to get at and I don't know why that wasn't popping up there. I don't think this will work. It's probably gonna get me, yep, error, okay. do UI underscore accept hmm ah wait I'm just gonna do it the way I usually do things <laughs> we're gonna do function um, physics process Delta and we say if input dot is action just pressed I don't usually do it with that I do it this way um, and then I guess UI accept underscore UI accept okay then we're gonna do this okay and that should work except that that's not happening so if we go to project project settings um, actually let's make a UI underscore we'll just do shoot okay and then to this I'll add mouse button uh, left button device add okay cool and then what I'll do is I'll just change this to shoot and now we should be able to do this okay cool so that's the basics of shooting now we need to get it actually coordinate how do they work so yeah so I'll quickly go over like the basics of what I just did although the again the point of this is actually I'm going to make a detailed tutorial on how to make this whole game uh, is that so the player missile is a script that just goes to the right right based on some speed we've set uh, rotated towards its own rotation and once it hits right with the distance to its target position which is this variable here is less than five it kills itself which eventually we're going to make it do that classic explosion which you can see happening right there um, now um, bum, 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 bum. So what we're doing here is that we're giving it a, a starting position as one of these two launch positions here. One, two. Uh, you can see them right here. Okay. 
uh, we're instancing it, we're giving its target position as whatever our click is, so our get global mouse position. Whenever it's pressed shoot, we're gonna get our global mouse position right there. Eventually I'm gonna put like ammo, so I think you only get like uh, 12 missiles per uh, level. And then so we'll say as long as in here, we'll say like if, you know, if you have less than, or more than 12, or more than zero or whatever, um, okay? Now, bum, 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 bum. yeah, okay. So then that starts us off at the start position. We know where we need to go. And then all we need to do is change our angle to face that position. Uh, and then it'll just move that way until that happens. So we'll just go missile instance dot rotation equals launch angle. And as you can see right here, what I did is I do our launch position direction to target. And this is the exact same thing as saying our uh, global position minus target dot global position dot normalized. Uh, it's the exact same thing as doing that. I just like to use the built-in function direction too because uh, it makes a lot more sense to me. Because uh, otherwise I'm like, okay, well, this this is gonna get me from this position pointing to this position. Whereas otherwise I'm like, uh, I don't, you know, I have to really think about what the subtraction is doing. Anyway, so that's the easiest. If you already know how to do uh, stuff like that, this I, is a method that is not, uh, wow, I need some Ben game. My neck is killing me. Um, how long? Um, yeah. All right. So that's that's cool. We got a little bit of that. So now what I'm going to do is make a explosion scene. So I'm going to add. Um, do I want to add an animated sprite? I think I'm just going to add a regular sprite because this is going to be a little bit of a complex. Well, I guess that's not true. We could, yeah, we could do this. Okay, we'll add an animated sprite here. And then to this, I'm going to go to explosion. Okay, so I made this. Oh yeah, you have to go frames, sprite frames, click into this. So then you click this. Then we go into images. Then we get, uh, that's weird. I don't know why there's two of them. Well, now I don't know which one to choose. Okay, uh, so vertical is going to be one. And then horizontal is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight frames, not seven but eight frames, okay. Select, clear all frames. Uh-oh, well here, let's see how that looks. Uh, and then we can see what that looks like when we play it. Yeah, okay, so that looks fine. Um, and then, so there's a few things we're gonna do here. One thing is that I want this to kind of get bigger as the explosion grows. Uh, and also, as you can see, or you can't really see, actually see that well, but what it does in the game to make that look really, really crazy um, is that like every other frame, they're actually disappearing. Uh, so let's see. So you can see if, if I pause this at different intervals, you'll eventually get one where, you see, it's just not there. That's because it's, it's making it disappear like every other frame. Um, so I don't quite know how to do that. I mean, I do, but without adding like a blank one here. Can I do that? Do paste. Can I do like add blank frame? Well, actually, I think I might be able to do a little something like this, which is a little sketchy. Um, so if we do this. Yeah, okay. So if we make the, oh, no, 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 wait. Yeah, okay, so we'll do this. We'll make this um, something like 24. Uh, we will have a, a blank frame. And then I'm only gonna select that frame. We're gonna add that one frame. And so now this is a blank frame. So what we can do now is add this in between those. Uh, and I should be able to okay, duplicate that. Paste. Interesting. Paste, paste, paste. Okay, and then if we put this in between these frames here. Should be able. Why is that? Why are you doing this to me? Okay. This like this. This like this. Like this. Okay, now we obviously want this to happen notably faster, um, but I think that is just about how we'd want this to look there. Well, how hard is it to just do that correctly? Okay, cool. Uh, and now I'll change the FPS here to like 15. 
that looks crazy. So I want the uh, normal sprites to actually last longer. So we'll set this back to, I think we'll keep it at 15. Um, now it's annoying to me that I can't, if I do this and paste, it pastes it over there. But uh, the idea is that we'll do, it might actually be easier to just do this as a sprite frame. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I am actually gonna change my mind here. I am going to delete this and then we're gonna add a sprite. So I'll show you what I'm going to do now because I think it's gonna be much easier. So we're gonna add the explosion texture right here. Then we're gonna to go to animation uh, vertical frames, I'm sorry, eight, eight frames and set this to eight. So we got it like that, okay. Then to this, uh, so this is gonna be player, well, we can just call this missile explosion actually. Uh, player underscore missile underscore explosion, okay. Uh, and then to this, we're gonna add an animation, animation player. Okay, and then we're gonna add an animation new, uh, explode, okay. And then this is gonna be our default, so like this. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Go in there like that, okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start keying uh, frames from this. So we'll go here, uh, eight frames. So eight, we're on eight, and then, oopsies, this, we're gonna go to frame. So we'll start with frame zero, like that, okay. Uh, and then after 0.1 seconds, put our frame to frame two, oopsies, sorry, frame one, like that. Oh, that's not what we want. This is what we want. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, and then, did I miss one? I feel like I missed one, especially because <laughs> Definitely missed one. Why did that happen? Okay, well that's, why would this happen? One, two, so yeah, so I think I missed one already. If we go here, I go, so this should be one, two, what's this one? So this is zero, one, three. That's the problem right there. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then we actually need these to go the other way. They're gonna come back down. So you can see what these do is they go up and then they go actually back down. Um, but let's just see what this looks like. Just the play from the beginning. So it looks like that, so it actually looks pretty cool. And then what I'm also going to do is have it scale the whole time. So I'm gonna to go to this and I'm going to go to transform scale. I'm gonna clock it right there at one one. Uh, and then right here at the final, we're gonna have the scale go to like, I don't know, 1.5 by 1.5. And then we'll clock that like that. Uh, so then it really adds an extra like expanding effect to it. And then we'll have it shrink back down uh, over the next seven seconds. Uh, but again, what we'd want to do is in between these frames is have them disappear just for a split second. It's like, it's very, it's happening very, very fast. So we obviously want these to uh, exist for much longer. But what I can do, I think, so if we go point, uh, is there five seconds? So then now I can go like this. Is that like something in uh, in between like this? What we can do is just add. Um, we can go to here, and I should be able to go to. I wonder if I can. Oh no no no! We'll do visibility. There you go. Okay, visibility on. Okay, and we'll turn it off at this frame right here. Okay, and then we'll turn it on at this frame right here, um, and then we'll just keep going on that. Uh, on and then off okay and then what I'm going to do is then you can duplicate frames so I'm going to do this like that put this right here click duplicate right here duplicate um, yeah and then one more right here and right here and then duplicate so this is probably not going to get me exactly what I want oh I don't know why oh, I didn't mean to do these frames 
Okay, delete keys. All right, cool, 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 cool. So now what we're going to do is see how that looks. That looks a little crazy. Look crazy? Yeah? So clearly. I mean, I think those really are only sticking around for. Um, yeah. And then, of course, these come back downwards. Um, right? So, what I'd like to do is like. I wonder if I can flip. What are you eating? Did you give her something? Oh, she's listening to a podcast. Okay. So we can duplicate these keys, but then I'm gonna have to flip them, which is kind of annoying. Um, okay, yeah, so we're gonna go this. I'm gonna say duplicate key. Um, then we're gonna come here. I'm gonna say duplicate key. And come here, say, Duplicate key. Okay, so how long? So that was 0.7 seconds to get there. So we need this to be 1.4 seconds if we want to go all the way back down. Go here, and then that was this one. Duplicate key here. This one. Duplicate key. Let's decrease that a wee bit. Okay, cool. Um, 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 hum, 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 hum. Okay, one, two, three, and then this one should be this one. Duplicate key, and then this one. Duplicate key, and then for some reason we need to go to 1.5, and then this will be the final one. Okay, click this. Duplicate key. Okay, and now. Ah, oh, because we lift it. Yeah, okay. We can actually, yeah, we'll do this. So, duplicate key. There we go. Okay, let's give it a shot. Yeah, so that's, you can see that that's actually, it didn't actually play this one now, which is weird. You put this at 1.6. Oh, no, it did. It's just that the scale was staying too high. So this should be 1.5, like that. And then we want the scale to start coming back down right here. So come back here, and then I'll actually just duplicate this key. Now we've got this interesting thing. Okay. We've got that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to worry too much about getting this just perfect. But uh, if we duplicate keys... Okay, and then we don't need these two keys right here because they are gone, right? What just happened? That's not what I wanted. Okay, we want to grab these two keys and then delete them. Okay, and then let's give it a shot. Eh? So I think this needs to stay on the screen for longer. And there's a few ways to do that, but I think probably the easiest way and kind of cheating is that you can go here and change the speed to like 0.75, right? And then I can do this. But yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of problems with this, but I'm not gonna try and get this absolutely perfect, um, right? So that's okay by me. Yeah, okay, so now we've got that, and then we want this to flash through all the colors like that. Um, and that's the last thing we got to do here is that we're going to go to our animation player. I'm sorry, our, our thing here. We're going to go to modulate. And I'm going to go to our HSV sliders. We're going to get the hue, and then we're actually going to just tag this right here. Uh, insert key. So if we want this key to be right here, okay. Uh, and then we'll do it like uh, to the top. We probably want it to go faster, but we'll see. We'll see what this looks like. Um, and then we'll go back to this, and we'll go to modulate, and I'm gonna change the HSV and put this all the way uh, at the top, okay? 
okay. And then I don't know why it doesn't say it show that it's changed, but it is, right? So it should. Oh, it's not going to change the hue? Why you not change the hues? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, that's why. <laughs> okay. Why not this? Okay, so value. We're going to go to our HSV slider. I'm going to put this right here. And keep the hue at zero. Okay. And then, so that's what we want there. And then we're going to go right here. Now we're going to put this right here. And we're going to put the HSV slider and put this all the way over to the right like that. Um, yeah, okay. And that should work, I think. No, it's just staying red the whole time. Because ideally what I want is the HSV, the hue to shift all the way over here. Um, so I don't quite know why that's not happening. Maybe it's because it's using the uh, RGB values rather than the HSV values. So that sucks, but there's a way around that, but we just have to do it via code, which is fine by me. Um, yeah, actually we can just keep that going. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I am haven't even saved this yet. Um, we're going to save this as missiles, and this is going to be player missile explosion, save. <clears throat> and then I can go ahead and add a script here. Then I'm going to write a, another one, so we're going to say function physics process delta. And what I want. So I want the modulate dot h, I think. Modulate. Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's also what I wanted. Uh, modulate. I want to get this for the node. There's green salad if you want. Thank you. Where is where is modulate? Oh, it is under canvas item. Okay. Oh no, here's what we want. We want color. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. So we can set this to uh, zero. Yeah, so we're grabbing this. We're going to say dot h. Okay. So we're going to say modulate dot h um, ba -ba 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 -ba. plus equals one, right? And so let's do that. Okay. And then now if we run this. So that's weird, so that's working. So it should be doing that, okay? And then should be able to run this, and it should work, but it's not doing it for some reason. Debugger, what, you know, like, not using delta? Yeah, okay. So essentially we're trying to go through all the uh, hue values uh, as this changes, and this should happen very quickly. So modulate.h plus equals one. So I'm actually going to say print modulate dot h. Let's do this. Zero. So I don't know why it's saying zero if I'm clearly <laughs> modifying it right here. Equals 10. Why that don't work? I don't know. That should work. I think that might actually be a bug because that should work. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a range zero to one. That's weird, but okay. Um, plus equals 0.01. Okay, there we go. That actually works pretty well. Okay, first let's just move this over here so we can see it. We definitely want that to happen faster. Okay. So, change this to point 0.1. There we go. So that's a nice flashing thing there. That's, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to what they've got going on here, right? They're kind of just teasing that through. I would say the difference here is that we're not getting a white, which is actually interesting. Okay, but you can see because it's doing that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> my little baby play. You little play, boo 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 do. So you run away from your other toy. Okay. Um, but you know what? Yeah, we don't have to get this perfect. That's that's good enough. That's like a pretty. You get what's happening there. Explosion. Okay. Uh, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do to this is we're gonna add a uh, area. To D. Okay. And we're gonna go back here. I'm sorry. Go to our animation player, and we're going to go to one. Make the area 2D here. So let's let's actually go back here and put this position at two. So we're gonna add the area 2D. We're gonna go to not space override, but oh, okay, to this we're going to add a collision shape, and then to this we're gonna add a new circle shape. Okay. Uh, I'm going to change the visibility because I want to make this a different color here. Who knows why that is happening? Oh, that's why. Okay, so we go here. Oh, we do need to leave that as that, don't we? Let's do raws. That's fine. Okay. Let's do this. So, function ready. Uh, modulate equals color one zero 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 one okay cool so then we can do this and then we can that'll look a little bit pretty yeah, for us okay so we'll go collision shape circle and um, we'll radius and we want to take that whoa can you do let's do one about five okay five so what we're going to do is now uh, scope this up. So it's going to come from five here at the beginning, right? Uh, we'll start that there. Okay. Then when we get up here, we want the new collision shape radius to reflect that. So we're going to do a little something like that, probably. So 17, it looks like. Uh, and then we'll come back down here and we'll set it back to whatever this is, which should be five, but oh yeah, it is five. Okay. Okay. And now what you can see happen is that when we do this, the collision shape radius expands and shrinks. And uh, <laughs> you see she get your shoe? You eat shoes? You eat shoes, young girl? You eat shoes? You eat shoes? I really want to show you what's happening right now. Um, yo, Javon, what's up, man? Um, I might be calling upon you to teach me how to use uh, audio recording studios because it's getting me really frustrated. If you ever want to do a collab live stream and like, you know, educate me, that'd be dope. I've actually been, I've been thinking about asking you, but I it just like don't want to email for some reason. <laughs> that seems like uh, very official to me. Um, and we are making Missile Command in Godot, if you know what that game is. Okay, so very cool. And then now, you see this explosion looks pretty decent and uh, it's now going to work to kill people. Uh, and then we need it to, of course, queue free after this. So I'm going to go to the animation player and we actually are going to make this um, 1.6 and then at this sixth frame I'm going to call a function. So we're going to go here and do function. It's going to be die. Okay. And then this is just going to be Q free. Okay. And then what we do here is we're going to do this call method track. This one. Um, where did it go? There it is. Okay insert key, and then I'm going to say die, just like that. Um, and now we'll have this so that it explodes, and it does that, and then it disappears and it dies, because it died, right? So I think these last a little bit longer. Well, that's, that's about how long they last, probably. <laughs> I'll, I'll email you and we should actually like set something up, because it would be cool to learn how to make game sounds and I can explain to you like what I'm trying to do. I'm also, I have like legit like clinical OCD and if things aren't like exactly the way I want them, it like gives me, I don't know how to explain it. Like makes me anxious and like very uncomfortable. <laughs> so um, that would be dope if you could teach me how to do it so that way I don't have to ask other people to make them for me and then constantly just be like, it's not perfect and like be either super annoying to them or just kind of uh, not just like deal with them not being exactly how I want them because it's like impossible to communicate to somebody like exactly how you want something to be 
Um, okay. Anyway, so this works. This is cool. And then what I'm going to do here is go to Project Settings, General, and we're going to go to um, bah, 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 2D Physics. Make some layers. We're going to say, actually, we only need right now, so Explosion Layer. And then we'll make Enemy or Missile. Yeah, enemy missile, okay, just like that. And then eventually I'm gonna to need to make these layers. So we'll say city, um, land. Yeah, city and then land. I think that's gonna be it. Yeah, okay. Cool, okay. Um, hum, 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 hum. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is get a uh, visibility notifier 2d and then here uh, i'm just going to connect the screen exited single here and then we're also going to call the function uh, die actually that's not what we... oh wait no yeah we don't want this here my fuck is stupid or something that's what we... i'm going to put that on the player missile not this okay so we've got an explosion now what we need to do is go to the collision shape I'm sorry, the area 2D here. And we'll go to collisions. Uh, what layer are we on? We are on the explosion layer and we interact with enemy missiles. There you go. And that's about it. That's, yeah, that's about it uh, for this. And this should work actually. Um, of course, we'll need to eventually add some sound effects, but that should get us a point where we can do this. Okay. And then, so what we're going to do here is go to player missile. And then in this script, actually, I would like to do this. So the, that was what I was trying to do. Visibility notifier. Uh, and then we connect the screen exited signal. And this is just in case you shoot a uh, bullet off screen that it will die. Actually, I guess you don't really need to do this. No, I, 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 I am going to do this. Okay. Um, so, yeah. We're going to say die. Okay, just like that. Okay. Now in our die function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another variable here, and this is gonna be called explosion underscore TSCN. Okay, and we say equals preload, and then we're gonna grab it from right here. Um, 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 um. It should be popping up. Please. Yeah. Player missile explosion, there we go, okay. <sighs> Right there. Then, right here, what we're going to do is say var um, explode underscore ins, and then we're going to say equals explosion scene dot instance. Okay. And then we're going to say xbl instance dot global position equals self um, dot global underscore position. I always put self for some reason, but it's totally not necessary to do that. Um, and then we're gonna say get underscore parent dot add underscore child um, uh, XPL instance like that. Okay, so explosion instance is this. We're gonna set our global position equal to the same position and we're gonna spawn our explosion instance and then we're gonna kill ourselves. And that's it. Okay. So now if we go, actually, I'm going to do this as well. Go to project settings, right now at least. Uh, run. And we're going to select the main scene here. Main level. Right now, we're going to do this. And this is going to be the first thing that runs. So I can just do this. Look at that. Huh? Honestly, those look a little freaking massive. Yeah, I think they are a little too big, so we'll go fix that right now. So, in the... Whoa, my mouse is being weird. Okay. No, it's doing it again. Okay. I, I don't... I, I think that helped. I don't know. Okay. Here is... That's shape radius. We want scale. Okay, so this is value, wait, value one one. Why is that the value one one? 
not the value one one. Oh, that's why. I I knew it. Okay, one one right there. That's super weird. Okay, we want this to be 1.5, 1.5 like that. Okay. In fact, actually, I don't want this one at all. I want to just delete that key. Uh, and then the idea is that this will actually be kind of like that. Okay. Check this out. All right, we're getting there, you guys. We are getting there. That's uh, we now got some bullets, and these will actually kill the enemy missiles um, as we go. I mean, I feel like this would give somebody a seizure for almost certainly, but um, it looks good. That's I mean, yeah, that's it. That's the game, folks. Thanks for watching. Yeah, the white is definitely prevalent there, and it's not quite so prevalent on my game. But... So, I can... See, that that's the type of OCD thing where I'm like, I have to fix that. So, I'm going to fix that really quick. Uh, you can see right now what we're doing is this. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm going to make a variable here. Say var, uh, and we'll say is is underscore white say equals false actually we'll set this yeah we'll say false okay and then right here i'll say is white false okay and then we'll say if is underscore white pass and we'll say else um is underscore white uh, equals true. And then here I want to do is white equals false. So essentially what this will do is every frame it'll flip between doing one of these. So if if is white, not this, we'll do this. Okay, so else is white equals true and we're gonna set change our modulation by this. Um, here, what we're gonna do is, um, so here we wanna set our modulate to this, we're gonna do this, okay? And then here, what we're gonna do is this, but we're gonna change this color to just be one, one. Okay, cool. And then I think that should work. Oh, that's weird, should not be happening. Okay, so we start the game. Okay, this is gonna run. It's gonna say, um, this is false, so this is not gonna run. This is gonna run. Then we're gonna set this to true, okay? Then the next frame is gonna do this one. It's gonna set this to false, so thus this is not gonna run. This one's gonna run. Okay, so we're setting this equal to this, and we're increasing our hue by that every time. Then when this, we're gonna set this equal to that. So. The problem is, I don't honestly understand the problem, you know. I don't know why it's the same weird orange color. Because if I were to just do something like this, uh, this shouldn't, this should still work. Ah. Oh. Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see, I see. I see. Okay, let's open up color again and see if I can change this. Okay, so. <laughs> Mr. Sandman, give me a dream. Da -da 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 okay, so this is RGB, that. Oh, okay, so we can do color from HSV. Oh, okay, I know what we can do. Rather than doing this, so we're actually changing the whole color here, what we can do is modulate, um, so we can get the saturation value. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. 
So I think if I make this, for instance, and we go over here, let's um, zoom in on this a wee bit. So if we go there, right, I'm gonna make this collision shape invisible. And then I go to the HSV values, and this is what you know, whatever. If I make the saturation zero, perfect, that makes it white. And there we go. There we go, folks, that's the answer. So we're gonna say modulate um, dot s equals zero. And then here we're gonna say modulate dot s equals one. Okay, now let's see what that looks. Why? 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 Okay, so again, I wanna try this and do this. See what happens now. Okay, so that is looking fine. So clearly this is the problem. So if we do this, so let's do, um, print modulate dot s so it's zero super weird wait 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 what okay Range zero to one. Yeah, so I really don't understand why that's not working. Runjin, what's going on, dude? Yo, maybe you could actually tell me what the hell I'm doing here. So I'm trying to make it so that every other frame, it'll be white. So I'm setting the saturation to zero. Wait, 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 wait. So I do this, I go to raw, I set my red there. It's still not red, why? Oh, what if I did, oh, so set this to one. We need to set these to zero and zero. Okay, now if we do that, now if I go to the HSV and then change the saturation to, okay, so now I'm confused because, yeah, so that should absolutely be working. Oh, fudge, what did I just do? Okay, everything's normal, okay, so, what I'm confused about here is that you can see that we're setting this to zero, which should make it white, okay? And if I just do this, okay, this should work, but it, it's staying red, but the saturation should be zero. You wanna tell me what's going on here? I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> so modulate down S. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Okay. I, I'm about to quit this because it's not even that important. I'm gonna say print modulate uh, dot S. Okay, and then I would like this to be right there. And then so this should print. Yeah, so it's printing zero one, but it's clearly not actually displaying zero one. So I'm just gonna have to do this, which is fine. I mean, yeah, let's just keep it simple, huh? Doesn't need to do this. No, this is what we don't need any longer. Okay, anyway, so there's the explosion, there's that. This happens, it explodes and it can now kill the enemy missiles. Um, that's probably a very good point.
Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense, Runjin, but that's what I was actually originally thinking. But then, still, if we just run this, then it should display as white, but it's displaying as red. Oh, oh. <laughs> We're setting equal. Is it because it's a. No. What? Look at it. I'm setting it right there. Oh, that's why. Okay. Well, set this equal to true. <gasps> Mamma mia. Here we go again. My, my. Okay. 1.0. 0, 0.0. God, that was so annoying. Nope. Okay. Um, 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 hum. Hum, um, um, hum, hum. So it's clearly switching between those values. So I think maybe maybe you are right. Maybe you're right. This should be true for this. Okay, now it's red. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe I should yield for some amount of time, but I, I don't like using that, so we'll just do this. It doesn't need to be white. I mean, I do feel like it's it's definitely missing something without it going between white occasionally, but uh, I mean, it works. So we just do this, and then we get that nice rainbowy stuff. Uh, you can see where I'm at right now. So I can launch things. They hit them. There you go. We got that stuff. He's back. Draw Central is back. Um, wait, the way I had it right here, right, because false, so it's going to run this first. We're going to set white, is white equal to true? So it's going to run this one. That's going. I mean, you can also see, because when I do this, you can see the print here. It's printing the uh, modulate.s, and it is printing between 0 and 1. So what if we do this? So I only want to run, oh no, we'll set this to true. And then I'm only gonna, just because I hate not solving these things. Okay, so what this will do, this will run this, then it will run this for the rest. Okay, so that to me means that your first assumption was right, Runjan. I think it's taking, it's not, or it's too fast for your eye to really pick up on it. So, yeah, please tell me I can just, just do this. Nope, okay, that's fine. So I'm just gonna leave it. It looks fine, honestly, and I, I don't need it to be absolutely perfect. That's something I can come and fix uh, later on. Also, this is eventually gonna be like a, a beginner tutorial and I don't want to have to confuse them with stuff like that. Okay, there we go. So there's a nice pretty script for us. Okay, no variables in this one, but there you go. So now we can shoot these and they explode and we do that. So now what we're gonna do is make the uh, enemy missiles, which are going to be done in a extraordinarily uh, similar fashion as the player missile. Um, so much so that uh, I'm almost a little embarrassed to have done this. Okay, so I'm actually gonna, the player missiles we want to be that color. Okay, and then we want the, um, so we're gonna add a sprite here. Okay, and then we're gonna do missile. I know we got projectile. I need projectile here. So just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna put the visibility modulate to the green color because they're green. Um, and then let's see how these work. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna add a, uh, yeah, these actually are gonna be significantly different. So we're gonna add, first of all, let's just slide this, enemy underscore uh, missile. <laughs> enemy missile, okay. We're gonna save this, I'm um, gonna save this right here. Okay, uh, and then I'm also going to add a script for it. And then I'm gonna add a area 2D, okay, to the area 2D. Um, yeah, let's zoom in. 
Oh, that's my dog. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Okay, so to the area 2D, we're gonna add a collision shape. Okay, and then we're gonna make this a normal shape like that. And we wanna make this, I guess we'll make it like that big, okay? Um, and then what we're gonna do is connect the area entered signal right here. Okay, and then I want to make sure that we're on the right collision layer. So we are an enemy missile and we are going to collide with explosions, city, and land. There's a few things. Um, okay, say on area entered, and then we're gonna say die, which I haven't written yet. Function die pass, okay. Uh, we're not ever going to use the area, so we can do that, okay. So on that, and then here, of course, we're going to Q free, and I think the enemy missile explosions do the exact same thing. Oh, that's cool. They show what they're exploding on. I might be able to do something like that. I think you can do something like that with like the subtract, uh, or not subtract, but if you go into canvas item experience, uh, material here. So player explosion, and then we go here and I go to material, material, uh, canvas item material. I think you can change this. Well, if I go to subtract, yeah, that's not gonna work out, is it? That's a bummer. Go normal. Yeah, that's okay. Because you would want it so that if they're over, whoa, what just happened? That was weird. Okay. Oh, Runjan, I'm using Restream, so I'm on Twitch right now, but I don't think anyone's watching me on Twitch. <laughs> Which is cool. I mean, I prefer YouTube, but it's it's nice. Okie dokie, hokey pokey. So we've gotten that. The explosion does that. Super duper simple. Enemy missile. We've got this one. Now we need to add the actual cerebral function. And then I'm actually just going to copy this from here because this is going to be... Um, same player missile paste that okay so all it's going to do is move to the right oh and then we need to define a constant speed constant speed equals uh let's see what do i want this to be well see the other one was 10 so we probably want this to be half that speed you can see the enemy missiles are they move way slower than your missiles. I would say probably almost half your speed. So yeah, we do that. Uh, and then we can just run this and see how fast that moves. That's actually still pretty fast, I feel like. Yeah, they don't they don't move that fast. Okay. Here's just a three. Are they even moving that fast? The other thing is this is clearly a larger um screen here hmm yeah they've got a lot more room whereas I'm doing like a kind of HD thing which is a, a bit of a problem because I, I do think that kind of takes away from the game a little bit but hey we're doing it uh, it's already too late I already made all the art assets for the land actually I guess we could pretty easily um, scrunch that land up. I don't want to warp it, but what I could do is just kind of cut it. And no one would be wiser. So like if I just cropped it like here, it would still look fine based on what we're doing, but I don't know if I want to shrink it. Right. Anyway, we'll keep it as it is for right now. And I think I will have them moving at a speed of two for right now. Okay. And then we can see how fast that moves. So it's not like incredibly threatening, but it's like where you have enough to do a little something like that. Okay. Um, and then we say on area enter, we're gonna die. Um, hum, 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 hum. Hum, 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 hum. See, these are so similar that I wanna see if we can do something like, like can I reach in here? I don't know if you've, Oh, that's dope. I love getting raided. I've never been raided, but I've raided. Um, Runjin, do you know, um, what's his name? Oh, 
He was actually, they just interviewed him for the Godot thing. He's a really cool uh, Godot. John Watson. Spell his name right? Nope. What the? Here's his game, Gravity Ace. He'll probably come out. There we go. <laughs> okay. So this dude's really cool, really great at Godot. And I've, I like to watch him stream. And he, yeah, he, I learned a lot of really cool tips and tricks from watching him uh, do stuff. So I, I mean, I would definitely check him out. I don't know if you know about him, Rungeon, but he's dope. And Godot actually just did a, uh, they posted on Reddit, like a, a story on him. Cause I don't know, he, he's a full-time programmer in real life. So he actually, he really like knows what he's doing. He made a dope, I should actually, yeah, I'm actually gonna do that real quick. I'll show you guys what I'm about to do. Um, so we go here, and I go to Godot code, black body project, um, black body Godot files, add-ons, ridiculous coding. Okay, actually I'm gonna copy this whole folder here. And then I'm gonna go here, and then just paste that in here. Okay, and let's see, hopefully that pops up. Okay, so there's images, scenes, add-ons. Hopefully if I go to project, plugins, there it is. And I think I have to restart the editor for this to work, but it's worth it, trust me. Um, what am I doing? Oh, I hit the wrong one. Okay, that's what we want. No, nope, this is what we want. There we go. Okay. Um, 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 um. Godot, go disel command dot, commando. Okay, now if this worked, okay. <laughs> How loud is that? <laughs> okay, hold on. This, we might need to take this down to like negative five decimal, maybe negative 10. Okay, Let's see. Okay, I think that's probably fine. So he made this plugin, it's so epic. But for some reason on Mac, it like doesn't work super duper well. And it like keeps putting it all up there. And I don't quite know why, he's on a Linux. Um, and I fixed it, I thought, like if I go to my Blackbody project here, I thought I fixed it, but maybe I forked it or funked it. File, oh no, I wanna, yeah, that actually is right. And we wanna go to, project.godot and then like any script no it's still fucked up there. but it, it's it's supposed to like do that at the line you're actually on and uh, it's very cool I don't know why it's not working for me here um, maybe I should just not even have it on <laughs> but whatever I, I already did it and I don't want to restart the editor again okay so Got this, there's an explosion, enemy missile, it moves until it hits something and then it explodes. Pretty simple stuff. And then we basically just need to, um, oh, but we need to make their explosion. So that's what I was gonna do. So if we go to the explosion scene here, um, the only difference between our player missile explosion and an enemy missile explosion uh, is going to be what type of objects it can collide with. Uh, but I actually think, yeah, it's only going to be what type of objects it can collide with. So, the question is, dude, Ranjan, it's so funny that you're saying that because I am actually about to, I've already recorded it and I'm halfway through editing a video on how to make plugins because I made some crazy plugins. Um, or I made one crazy plugin, one really simple plugin. I think I, I've shown you the um, Godot gamepad, right? And so this is a, this is, this was a tough plugin. It's still not done. Um, but if we go to, well, actually, what, so one thing I can do here is if I could click A and I can search layout config, and you can see gamepad layout. So that's a node I made myself as a plugin. 
and then the plug other plugin is right here. So all of this stuff is part of the plugin. So gamepad layout config, and then I can go here, and I can go left side, and I can change this to a D-pad, and you can see that um, on there it actually changes. So joystick empty. I can add uh, the action buttons like this. I do this, and they can be like ah, right. Like you know, we'll do this one. We'll make it H or whatever, and then it, it doesn't real time. You can change the color, stuff like that. So yeah, really, really cool um, type of stuff there. And what's actually happening, right? I forgot about this. Is that it's actually saving all this stuff to a JSON um, as you do it, so it's cool. Let's quit. Let's quit. Okay. Um, so yeah, and then I also made I also made the little dialogue plugin, which is cool. That uses a dictionary of values and kind of shows you what dialogue you're looking at, so you can mess with that. But anyway, I'm going to be making a tutorial on like how to make those plugins. And I, I don't think they did a fantastic job of explaining it in the documentation. It was kind of troublesome for me. So I'm gonna like really breaking it down um, still quickly uh, where it's not, I, I think the video should only be like definitely less than 15 minutes, hopefully less than like 12, um, but it should be pretty simple in teaching. I'm gonna make, I've already made this. Actually, I might even install my own plugin on this. And what it does is uh, for all controls, you have the option to click your, there's a little option above pivot offset. This is keep centered. And then it keeps the pivot offset like right here, like right in the center, no matter what you do, which is, I think it should be an option. So yeah, that's a plugin I made. I'll teach you how to make that in that tutorial. I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, okay. So we should be able to reach in here and go to collision. So go collision layer. Oh, we can set it. I think we can set it. So if we go to, um, 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 um area 2d here it should tell us if we can set it so get collision layer bit oh we can't set we should be able to okay collision layer yeah you can set collision layer uh collateral objects can exist in any 32 different layers a contact is blah 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 okay cool so what that means is i'm gonna say uh funk. whoa i forgot about that how, how is the volume on that? I try to turn it down, but let me know. So I'm going to do, let me get another function here. Function uh, set, um, wow. Oh, just call it set collision. Set call, okay. Uh, and then we're gonna say, player, okay, like this, and then this is gonna be a Boolean value, okay, um, and by default, this is going to equal true, and we're gonna say if, oh, so yeah, we actually don't even need to do that. We can actually just do this, I think. I'll just do it. We'll say so. We'll say if player pass, and then so I should be able to do say um, grab the okay. Let's let's crank that down then. Let's drop this to twenty five maybe. That should be good. Okay. Did that help or not at all? Because I think, okay. Oh, why is it not working? Yeah, so it's picking up on my external mic is the problem. I'm gonna get rid of that plugin. <laughs> let's let's do that because it's not working very well. Okay, cool. Okay, sorry about that. So on ready var uh, area uh, equals. Area 2D, oh, I actually need, no, yeah, area 2D, okay. And then we're gonna say area dot set underscore collision layer bit. Wait, now I'm confused because is this gonna be the bit value? Oh, bit zero, okay, and this is bit 19. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, we want to set, our layer is always gonna be explosion But we, if we are, yeah, 
Okay, so, sorry. If we are uh, on the player layer, this is what we want. So we want to say set collision layer bit. We actually need to say set, set underscore collision layer mask bit, or collision mask bit um, to whatever this is, which is going to be one to, to uh, Oh, so it's an int, that's great. Okay, uh, I don't know what the other part does though. That's a bit, okay. Returns an individual bit on the, what do we want, set. There we go. Set clear individual bits on the layer. This makes uh, getting an area in out of only one layer easier. Set clear individual bits on the collision mass. This makes selecting the area scan easier. What does the value mean? Bit int. Okay, value bool. Oh, is true or false? I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Okay, one, and then we want this to be true. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to say if or we'll just say else. Okay, I actually want this to be false by default because we typically won't even use this through that. So else we're gonna say area dot set underscore collision layer bit one false. And then I'll also do uh, this, we're gonna set this to true. And then which layers do we need to set true? Uh, well, we want this to collide with uh, the city and land layers, so that should be bit, yeah, bit two and three. We want those to be set true. Yeah, two and three. Okay, bit two, true, then bit three, true. Okay, cool. Uh, and so that way, let's see. Ah. Uh, Peace, Runjan. Thanks for stopping by. Dragon Paint Games, what's going on, man? We are making uh, Missile Command. Don't know why I blanked on that. Um, and yeah, it's cool. It's cool. So what I'm doing right now is making the explosion scene. So it's still going to be called... I'll rename it. So we'll just call this Explosion. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is rename both of these to just Explosion. Okay. Explosion.gd. Okay, I'll rename this one. Uh, rename explosion. Okay, so that might cause some issues. And in fact, it's assuredly going to cause some issues, particularly right here where, no, that's the missile scene. So we need to open up player missile. And then this should just be explosion now. There we go. Okay, so that's actually going to work. Um, and then let's see. let's see, 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 yeah, okay. Nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, so what else do I need to do? Okay, yeah, so set call, uh, and then by default, we're actually not gonna ever use this, but I just thought just in case, um, by false, so we could just be able to do that. And this will make it so that if it's an enemy missile. So now I'm gonna open up enemy missile, enemy missile scene. I'm getting right in here uh, on die. We're actually going to do basically exactly what player missile does. So I'm going to do this, paste that in here. Okay, and then we're going to do, wait, where's it? Player missile, this like this, and then just paste that right here into player missile. Where are we going? Enemy missile. Okay, on die, and do this. Okay, so we're gonna say, this is explosion? No, no, okay, good, we're an enemy missile, that's where we wanna be. Okay, so we're gonna say this, so it's gonna spawn this, but we're gonna do one thing differently, and that is that we're going to say, explosion instance dot set underscore call, and then we, that's it, we just, just call it like that, and that will make it, um, we should just do set enemy, <laughs> actually. Um, but, so we'll call this set, Set enemy, okay, and then we'll have to do here 
where is it? Enemy missile view set underscore enemy like that. Okay, cool. And now we actually just need to get the main scene to spawn these guys and then they'll work. And then we'll actually have a, a somewhat playable game where we'll have these things spawning and then um, we will be able to shoot them down. And then once I do that, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of break and make some lunch, but maybe not because now I have nine concurrent viewers and I'm willing to starve for that amount of attention. Um, just got into Godot about a week ago for making 3D games. You should have so different than C Sharp, it's taking a bit. Really? That's interesting, because C Sharp is, is like, I feel like more difficult, um, even though they are different. Um, but it's like, you know, the concepts are the same. I don't, I mean, I don't know much about C Sharp. But yeah, I, I'm, so I'm assuming if you're not already subscribed to Runjin, he is a, well actually, yeah, so you're, you're diving into GDScript, but I don't know if you know, uh, but you can actually code in C Sharp. It's got the availabilities, although there are some issues with it, so I'd recommend running GDScript, but you know. And then once you learn GDScript, bro, like you can code Python. So that's nice if you know you wanna make some simple scripts that like do stuff for you. You can do that in Python on your computer because this is essentially Python, which is nice. Uh, I'm actually gonna make a um, intro to GDScript course. I'm five episodes in right now, but I'm trying to finish the whole thing uh, on basically how to code GDScript for, it's for non-coders, but for you, you could probably watch on two times speed and get like the gist of everything. Um, and yeah, it's gonna basically start from scratch, go through how to make all the loops and stuff like that. I, honestly, it might be too slow for anyone with coding experience. It's mainly for people who have never coded before and wanna learn. Oh, interesting, I didn't know C Sharp was more performant. I, you know what's funny though is dude, like I've done some really exhaustive stuff in Godot with GDScript and had literally no issues with frame rate drops or, or anything like that. As long as you're doing things correctly in the way that they want you to do them in the engine. Like insane things that I'm like, yeah. It, and, and zero, I look at my frame rate, you could go down here to the debugger and go to the profiler and whenever, so I can start this, right? I actually wanna, I usually do this to self and then we go to frame percentage like this. We'll start this and then I run, okay? And then we can see that if I start shooting stuff like this, very interesting. Well, it's got a cool effect. Okay, but then we'll go back here, go to the debugger, go to the profiler and we'll stop it. And then you can see essentially uh, everything that's happening. Oh, maybe I set it up incorrectly here. Uh, I think we do not frame time. Oh, I should have been inclusive, huh? Okay, start this one more time. Okay, now we'll go back, quit. Oh, I got an error, that's good to know. Profiler, stop, it's the error. Interesting. Explosion entrance, very interesting. Very, I've never had that issue with, I've had that issue with other uh, functions, but never with the, uh, the add child function, where it wants me to do set deferred. Um, but we'll see, we'll see if that's a persistent issue. Um, but you can see, so it actually like identifies, you can see like what functions are doing it. And it usually, I, I guess they changed it in the new one, but it, this used to have all of the different functions. And so if, if any one of your functions were taking too much data, you'd see that here. Uh, and you can go and like look at your uh, frame rate and stuff like that, frame time uh, or average time in seconds and frame time, stuff like that. It's really handy. Um, but anyway, total digression. I need to start finishing up this game. So, yeah, super duper cool. Interesting. Yeah, I guess, because then you really want, or like, I guess, probably an online game, you probably want something to happen really quickly. Okay, so I'm losing people by the second. So what I want to do, so we've got spawn player missile right here. I want to look at the original game and see how they deal with spawning, spawning, spawning <laughs> um, their missiles. So let's see, I'm gonna start. Here's a new level. So it looked like the majority of them spawned at the start and then they give it either a certain amount of time. It's not like entirely random. Um, the locations are random, it looks like, but the very interesting, because like that's not gonna hit anything, is it? Yeah, 
so they spawn the majority right up front like that and then the second wave comes and they shoot those I don't know if those are aiming directly at cities or they're kind of random well that's fun I really want to make mine subtractive now but uh, I'm probably not gonna figure out shaders and also this is supposed to be very easy because uh, this is going to be a this is actually probably a, a great first game for you to do and I am actually what's gonna be perfect for you dragon is that I'm the whole point of making this uh, is one to tag this huge event that is gonna be going on with Godot which I haven't really been doing that great of a job of advertising I'll get to in a sec but also I'm gonna make this a tutorial series on how to make this game it's a pretty easy start game I am actually gonna get water really really quickly so I can tease this cool um, event it's a huge as you can see here the huge game event let's check this out pretty unimpressive I know but uh, I made that all myself and so essentially uh, it's it's a massive event you can probably put together what it is but it's hosted by a lot of other people on YouTube such as Runjan uh, as well as quite a few others like uh, Redefine Game Dev and, and Canopy Games and Bitbrain stuff like that and um, yeah it's gonna be a big event celebrating Godot and we're all kind of collaborating together it's pretty cool um, yeah it's fun okay but so So we want to spawn these missiles, and we, I guess we need to, first I'll just make the function spawn missile. So I'll make function spawn underscore enemy missile. Okay, pass. So what do I want to happen? I want to randomly spawn, um, So I think what I'm going to do is also do something I've, I've made a lot of times, which is a uh, function um, get underscore random. Well, here, we'll do this. Gen random spawn. Oop, gen random spawn underscore false. Okay. And then we're going to do this. Where to go? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, this uh, gen run spawn position. And this is going to turn a vector two, like that. Okay, oopsies. Like that. Pass. I think that's how you type hint. Let's see. A non. Okay. Return vector two dot zero. Just for right now, that's the same thing as passing. Okay, and we're not going to need anything, but we're going to ask it. Okay, and this is going to basically we've got randomized right there and this is going to get a, a random position uh, that anywhere we want to spawn to so what I want to do we know that the so I'm gonna make a var flip here that's how I do this so var flip equals rand underscore range uh, 0 to 10 like this okay Then we're gonna say, we're gonna generate our X value, gen, yeah, we need to we're gonna say var X and var Y here. And we'll just do X first. So we want our X value to be somewhere on a random range between, oh, actually this is much simpler because we're only spawning it somewhere in this box. Yeah, okay. So somewhere in a random range between uh, here and here, so it's 480. So x var x equals rand range um, zero to. Well, actually, we do want it to come potentially come from outside that range on the x-axis at least. So maybe negative 100 to 580. Let's try it. So negative 100 to 580. Okay. And then we want our y to be, yes, yeah, so we actually don't need this right here. Okay, and then we say var y equals rand range. Um, and then so zero, it's gonna be the smallest number, but we actually want, these are all gonna be negative values. 
So these, the largest number is actually going to be negative 10. And then the smallest number will probably be like negative 100 maybe. That should be good, I think. Mm, let's do negative 50. And then this should also probably be uh, 40 plus 50, which is 530. Should be negative 50. Negative 50. Okay, cool. Uh, and so that's basically as if we made a, a rectangle up here that is like, like that big, right? And then we're basically saying pick a random spot in there, and then we're going to spawn um, our uh, enemy missile somewhere in there, and then that's going to, and then we're also going to configure how it goes. Okay. So actually, because before what I've done is like I had a game where you could spawn on any of the four sides, and that was a lot more difficult. Here, I don't even know if I really want to break this up into its own function. <laughs> so uh, I'm actually going to say var, we don't even do that actually. So I'm going to say var enemy underscore missile underscore tscn equals preload, preload. Oh, wait, no, okay. Enemy missile scene, click and drag it right there, okay? Then we're just going to make an instance of that, so we're gonna say var enemy underscore, or we'll just do var missile uh, underscore ins equals, okay, cool. Um, enemy missile scene dot instance, okay? Uh, then we can do, say, missile instance dot global position equals vec vector two uh, and then I'm going to copy and paste these right here so x and then y like this okay then do this okay so spawn any missile so the first thing we're going to do is set the global position to be a random position um, between these two values right there um, Rand range this, this. So this is the X value, this is the Y value. Again, this is just spawning them somewhere right here. But now we need to have them shoot towards um, here. So now we need to pick a random location on here that we want them to shoot towards. Okay. Um, 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 um. Rotation. So we actually don't need yeah, okay, cool, cool, just making sure. So now what we're going to do is tell them which direction to point in. So we're gonna say, uh, missile instance dot global position dot angle, no, dot direction two, and then vector two. And then I'll probably make this in the actual tutorial, I'll, I'll simplify this out quite a bit. Um, so we're going to say missile instance dot rotation equals this dot angle. And now we pick um, the y, the y value of, um, uh, what is it? Object project setting. Uh, what's the size of it? So. Window, 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 there we go. Okay, so the width is 480. Oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I'm so stupid. So, uh, rand range here. So the Y value, oh no, I, I'm i I'm extra stupid because I thought I was so stupid, but in, in fact, I'm actually stupid. So the, the height is 270. So you want the Y value here to be uh, 270. And then, so it's gonna be basically somewhere at the bottom of the screen, and then this is gonna be from zero to 480, um, except I don't think I want them to be quite that. These should also have spaces. Uh, yeah, so we'll make this like 30 maybe. What does 30 look like? 30 is like probably like right there. Yeah, we don't want anything all the way over there. We probably want it like, probably like right there. So whatever that is, that looks like 50. So yeah, we'll do 50 in from both sides. 50, and then 480 minus 50, which is 430. 
Okay, now currently uh, the enemy missiles will not collide with the land, but we can set that up pretty easily. So here I'm just going to add a collision shape. Ah, so we actually need to do this. We need to add a static body 2D. To this I'm gonna add this, I'll call this land. Okay, and then to this we're gonna add a collision shape. You can't add a collision shape to um, anything that is not a, either sta a, a physics body. So we got rigid bodies, static bodies, and kinematic bodies. Uh, kinematic bodies for players, rigid bodies for stuff that just rolls around, static bodies for stuff that doesn't move. Um, and then I'm gonna add a new, I could, yeah, I am actually going to do a uh, polygon shape here. So actually, instead of this, we'll add a uh, collision polygon. Okay, and then we should almost certainly do this. But okay, so what are these coordinates? What coordinates do I have land set to? 0, 0.225. So land um, 0, 0.225. And then we'll set land back to 0. There we go, right where we need it. Okay, and now we'll set the collision polygon here to what we want. So. Uh, now we're going to draw basically where this can collide with. So we'll start here. And I'm not going to get like too, too crazy here. I want to do this relatively quickly. Honestly, though, I think... Oh, fuck. That's not what I wanted. Okay, let's do... You can actually reset it pretty easily, but so what I just realized is like, it would probably be better if I actually had this go somewhat inside um, the land here. So that way it looked like you're actually kind of colliding with it, which would be cool. Probably shouldn't do this many vertices, but it's, it's like you don't really have an issue with performance in Godot, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then you can, of course, move any of these points after you do this. Okay, and there we go. And when are we gonna check it there? Okay, so that's our collision, collision, our, our collision shape. Uh, if you want to add, move any of these points, it's pretty easy to just grab one and move it like so. Not, yeah, not troublesome whatsoever. You can perfect anything. This one I think should be a little bigger. It's a little crazy to me. Okay, and then I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller there. Okay. Yeah, and so the reason I'm setting it below the surface is so that it really looks like these things are like landing on the surface here. Uh, so it's just a visual thing. And then this looks horrendous, so I'm gonna make it disappear. But then what we can do here is go to the collisions and we'll say, well, what layer are we on? We are land, uh, and what can we collide with? Well, we can collide with the uh, enemy missiles and explosions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think we even need to mask this layer to be honest um yeah because it's only going to be hit so we can actually in fact not only get rid of both of these but we can go oh no never mind that's only in areas someone said something i guess it doesn't really cover what i need to do in my 3d project but it looks interesting oh yeah if you've got a very specific idea definitely not but uh if you're just trying to like learn the ropes of something and make like a quick game this is like pretty easy like i expect to if i wasn't talking so much like getting lost and stuff. Uh, I probably would have already finished the main gameplay loop <laughs> of this game. Like you could knock this out in six hours or something and this could be like a cool little weekend project to teach you the ropes and then you've got something fun. Um, okay, but so now, is it gonna work? No, we're not calling this function. So we're also not doing most of what we need. <laughs> so this will set it a correct angle and we're setting its rotation to that. Um, and then we're just saying, missile instance or now we say add underscore child missile instance okay 
And that's it for the spawn enemy missile function. Uh, and then I guess we'll do it on ready. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Um, so we'll just just for testing purposes, I'll say for missile in uh, range four. It's gonna let me do that. Okay. We'll do. It doesn't matter. Zero to five. Then we're gonna say spawn enemy missile. Okay, and now why? Okay, what does it not like? Did you mean angle? Yep, I did mean angle. Thank you so much for that. I should have collided with these though. So those definitely are also moving way too fast. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Oh, and then we have a bit there. Non-existent function set collision mask bit. In nil. That's super weird. It's like tree, oh, so it doesn't like this, that's weird. Okay, the look of our own missile is declared but never used in the block. Um, that's okay for right now. Delta is never used in the function. Do that. Okay, condition inside tree, return get transform. Get global transform. Okay, because, oh, so we can't get the... Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say var uh, launch underscore pos equals this and we say launch position launch position and then we can do launch position just like that and then hopefully that solves that so that did yeah so what's happening is that this is causing issues um, Oh yeah, dude, yeah. Collision, I, I don't think a lot of people go over it. Collision layers are so epic. Yeah, they just, all you have to do is set them, you say what mask you're on. So just really quickly, they're on area 2Ds as well as all of the physics bodies. You can see with the static body there. Um, and then, so the layer is what layer you exist on. So I've named them as you can see up there in my project settings. And then, so I'm, I am an enemy missile and what I wanna collide with are the explosions, cities and land. Or in this case, what area am I monitoring for? I want to see if I hit any of those things. Um, so, so right now it's saying that in the, 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 this function, it's saying this is not working. It's saying uh, non from set collision mask bit in base nil, which is weird because we should be able to do that. Let's do this. So, well, here, I'll do this, and then we'll do this. Okay. So I'll just declare that variable right there. Let's see if that fixes it. Oh, hell yeah, that worked. And we got some basics. We got some basic stuff going. But I don't think that in the actual game when you shoot, no, it does actually. Oh, okay. Then we might not actually even need this. Um, okay, so we want to go to enemy missile. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so on area 2D, area entered, uh, we want to, I'm actually now going to check. So essentially, uh, what's happening is that I don't want it to set it as enemy if it's collided with one of our own missiles. Uh, in that case, yeah, then we want it to basically identify itself as a uh, player missile. So we're gonna say, I'll just do this, I'll make a variable. Variable um, is, or hit player missile, hit 
player missile equals false. Okay, and then here we'll say we'll say if hit player missile pass else, then we're going to do this. So we're going to set enemy if it doesn't hit player missile. And here we're going to check real quick. We're going to say if area dot collision underscore layer equals 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 um, whatever the explosion for our player is on. Wait a second. Yeah. Ah, oh, this could be a problem. This could be a problem. That's why you should just use two different ones, but uh, okay. So we say var player underscore explosion. We'll say equals true by default. Yep. And then in main level, what I'll do here is when we spawn an enemy missile, I'll say missile instance dot layer. Oh, because I didn't save it. Explosion, play explosion. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That's, that's a problem. Okay. Oh. Okay, enemy missile here. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm tripping right now. Um, zero. Pass. Hey, 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 hey. Sorry. Okay, so, Dima. Yeah, I could probably finish this game in one stream, although I haven't eaten today, so I'm planning on getting like a very basic, like finishing just this like basic game loop up uh, and making everything work the way I think it should work. Um, maybe not even levels yet. Then I'm probably gonna stop streaming to eat and then I'll come back on at probably like, probably like three, I'll probably take an hour off. That's probably the, the deal for me today. Um, Okie doke. All right, so this is not actually what we're going to do, but it's kind of the general setup. I need it. I was. I realized like I didn't know what the hell I was doing there. I have an idea, but I haven't figured it out. So I'm going to talk this through, and then hopefully this will help you understand if you're interested. Um, so the problem is right now, and what I'm trying to do is that when we shoot the missiles uh, on our our missiles right, and they hit one of the enemy missiles in the game you can see here they actually turn into another explosion and then that explosion can then explode player missiles but doesn't hurt your own missiles or I mean doesn't hurt your own uh, structures right um, so we need to determine if we want the explosion to call this function set enemy and we're currently doing that right here because we're telling it to set enemy so what I would like to do is somehow say hit player missile, okay? If that is true, then we don't do this, okay? So actually what we wanna do is this. And we wanna say if not hit player missile, then do that, okay? Now what we're going to do here, oh, wait, yes. Ah, okay, now I see. Because it's not hitting the player missile, that's why this is confusing. This needs to be, and you can just uh, option command F on a Mac, and we say hit player explosion. That's why I, was, I kept getting confused there, because we're not, we don't, this does not uh, collide with the player missile, but instead collides with the, cl the a player explosion. Uh, and so what I'll do in the player missile scene here, if we go into explosion, we'll say player explosion, and player missile, um, where is it? Explosion instance. Let's just say uh, explosion instance dot player explosion equals true. Okay. And then, so this is, oh, this is by default true. So we actually, I want to make this false. Yeah, I want to make this false. We'll do that. Okay, true. Um, and then we actually don't need to do this here because then what we'll do is that when it's an enemy missile making the explosion right in here, we'll say um, 
explosion instance dot player explosion equals false. Okay, so if we don't hit the player explode, or yeah, so if we if we're not hitting a player explosion, then we're gonna say player explosion equals false. Explosion is a set enemy true. So in fact, I don't even want to do this because I think it would be better to just put that in here. So we'll uh, set enemy. Um, we'll say else player explosion explosion equals false. Okay, just like that. So cool. Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this as well, and then this because this doesn't even need to be there, really. Okay. We'll do that. This will just make it nice and succinct. So set enemy. Uh, we say var is this player explosion equals false. Uh, and then we do all this good stuff. So by default, it's going to be a player explosion, but then when the enemy missile explodes, uh, it's going to be, if not hitting a player explosion, it's going to be an enemy explosion, okay? So um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and quickly walk through what the hell I just did. So essentially what I've done is that if you shoot and it hits, your explosion hits an enemy missile, the enemy missile, well actually I need to, yeah, I need to fix that right, or finish that off right now. Um, but what we're going to do, so if we go here, we can go to, we can check what collision layer we collide with. So, oh no, that's actually not what we're going to do. We want to go here and we're going to say if area dot, um, dot has dot get, okay. And then, so if you do dot get on an area, it'll check all of its properties as well as all of its variables and constants. So uh, we'll go here to our explosion, player explosion. Okay, so if area dot get player explosion, and then we'll say, we could do an and, right? But uh, I like to nest them, okay. Air 2D centered, and then we'll say if area dot player explosion uh, okay then we're gonna say hit play explosion it's true okay so first when we hit any area we're gonna ask that area hey do you have this property player explosion right and that's because uh, this missile can collide with uh, the land or eventually we're gonna have cities right like these cities right here uh, and it can also collide with uh, our explosions from the player missiles. So we're gonna check that in, in here. We're gonna say, uh, are you what we're looking for? Do you have this property? If you have that property and if it is true, this is like, this is basically the same thing as saying equals equals true. So is, the, is this true? Okay, right? Or is true, whatever. So we go here and this will be true by default, but we'll set it false uh, in here. Then we're gonna say hit player explosion equals true. Okay, then once that is set true, meaning we've hit a player explosion, right? That, that's pretty straightforward from that point, right? Because just forget all that and know that if this is true, then we've hit a player explosion. So now we don't want it to kill our cities or anything like that, and we want it to kill other missiles. We want it to kind of like exponentially grow if, if that's a thing. Um, so if not hit player explosion, so if this is false, then we set enemy. But if it's true, so if we hit a player explosion, then don't set enemy. Keep it as a player explosion. And that's all that should have been done, hopefully. Yep, and that worked because you can see that it had um, oopsies. I do think, okay. That's pretty good. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do real quick? Um, because I'm about to go take my lunch break, but what I wanna do real quick is that as you could see there, um, you're not always going perfectly right in the center of the crosshairs. And I would like to set that up so you are, in fact, going perfectly in the center of your crosshairs. I think I'm gonna also make the uh, missiles go faster. So if we go like here, it goes all the way across. That's kind of That kind of sucks. I uh, know, I mean, that's kind of part of the game, isn't it? Oh, my mouse is lagging. I think it might be out of battery almost. Okay, anyway, so I'm gonna make it perfect. Um, oh my God, okay, there we go. So we're gonna go to player missile. And right now we're saying that like, 
if our goal distance position is uh, less than five, die. But what I'm also going to just add here is say that our global position equals our target position, right? Uh, and all it's going to do is just put us perfectly there. And now you'll see that, oopsies. Uh, so every time it should land right in center. And you shouldn't even be able to really tell that that's happening, right? Ooh, boom. Yeah, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Liking that a lot. Okay, and I mean, that's that's the basics of it. Um, that's, I mean, that's the main gameplay loop. And then making levels and stuff is not gonna be too, too difficult. Uh, and then of course we're gonna have HUD, so it's gonna reflect that we are, oh, interesting. I should probably do that on the cursor here. Really quick. Curse, what the, what the, oh, crosshairs. Crosshair.gd, so I'll open this. Uh, and then all I gotta do here is put the Z index like that. Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Uh, um, we'll potentially change this. I might make this on its own. Yeah, so here's what I'm gonna do to make the crosshair really do exactly what it should do. I'm gonna add a canvas uh, layer like this. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and make this a child. Oh, sorry, make, make scene root. Okay, the crosshair will still work, right? Um, and then we're gonna put this on a, a layer above. So this is gonna be the highest layer in the game is two. Okay, um, and now this should all work still. So you can see now this goes on top of everything. Okay. Oh, damn it. Let's see if it. Oh, so it's not, it's currently not colliding with the land. So we should actually probably do that. Um, the land here, we've got the collision polygon. This is if we go to collision layer. It's on the land layer, so that should work. And then if we go to enemy missile, go to the area 2D, it's masking for the land layer. Um, so we should be able to go print area here. Oh, dot uh, collision underscore layer. Okay. And then I want to let these hit the ground and see why exactly they're not. Uh oh, exploding here. Okay, so they're not being triggered. Sometimes this happens. It shouldn't matter that we don't have these masked off here, but I want this to collide with um, enemy missiles, essentially. Now let's see if this works. It shouldn't matter, but just in case. Still nothing. Very, that's really weird. Hmm. Hmm. So if we go here, we got the collisions, we got the layer. What layer? We are on the enemy missile layer. What do we want to collide with? We want to collide with explosion, city, and land. Okay. Yeah, nothing crazy. Then we go to main level. All we're doing is spawning these guys, right? Based on their enemy missile scene. The land is a static body with a collision shape, right? And the collision shape, is there anything, is it like disabled? No, okay, one way collisions, transform, visibility. Hmm. Feel free to post in the chat if you know what I'm doing wrong. So we're on the land layer and we are supposed to collide with the enemy missiles. So that is very confusing to me. Why that wouldn't work. Let's go to the debugger. Maybe it's yelling at me, telling me something. S area, set, shape, disable. Can't change the state when flushing queries. Use call deferred. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that so this is call underscore deferred why is it not no that's why call deferred okay and then let's 
be string for child. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we don't have to do that. This should be fine doing that. I forgot. I haven't run into this problem in a while. Um, but the way to get out of this is var dead equals false. If not dead, then dead equals true. And then do all this stuff. Okay, so the problem is actually that we're calling this die function multiple times. Uh, and so thus it's causing a problem because it's trying to add multiple explosions. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying, we make this function or this variable dead. And then we say, uh, if we're not dead, do all this killing stuff and then set dead equal to true. So we can only run this once. Uh, and I should actually probably do the exact same thing for the player missile. So I'll make another variable called dead, right? And we'll set this equal to false. Uh, and then same deal here. We'll say if not dead, dead equals true, uh, and then do all this. And same deal. So that way this can only run once for every lifetime of that. Uh, the local variable missile is, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna do this. This is how you can ignore those if you don't wanna deal with them. Click this, then click ignore. I hate that though, um, because it leaves this ugly stuff in your code. Okay, now we've got no more issues like that. Cool. That's cool. Okay. I definitely think I want to work on those explosions a little more because they look super weird to me. Wow, seizure warning. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that was that was horrible. That that really would have hurt somebody. Okay. Oh, debugger, we got some errors, that's good. Can't change the state when flushing queries. Uh-oh. Area set shape disabled, can't change the state when flushing queries. So, I think what the issue actually is, is that uh, the animation player of explosion is actually causing this to happen. So if we go to explosion, I'm changing the, uh, well, that looks cool. I'm changing the shape radius, essentially constantly. The whole time this is happening, the shape radius is changing. And this is potentially a problem because it's changing like very much so. And what's happening here, I believe, area set shape disabled, can't change the state while flushing queries. So I think one way around this potentially is that, so we'll go to the collision shape here. Oh, cause we're gonna be an output animation. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of shape radius. Well, before I do that, we'll go to collision shape and then you're not actually supposed to do this. <laughs> But uh, we can go to transform and then we can go to scale and I'll set the scale right here uh, as one one. And then when we're right here, uh, I want the radius to still be five. So yeah, we will actually delete all this stuff. And I'll set this back equal to five. Okay, right, cause that's what it was here and that looks good. Okay, uh, and then what we want it to be right here is we wanna set the scale now to be uh, big enough to fit this. So we'll make the scale, what does that look like? Maybe mm, three? That's pretty darn close. We want it a little bit bigger though. 3.3, 3, I, 3.3. Um, yeah, I would even make it bigger than that. Well, let's do 3.6 by 3.6. That's good, okay. So we'll do that, we'll set the scale there. Uh, then we'll come over to this one and we'll also set the scale still at 3.6 and then over here at this last frame we will set the scale to this one so duplicate keys so now you can see the same basically the same deal is happening except now we're adjusting oh that's interesting this one is not centered hmm well that's irritating that's why it looks so weird because this one's not centered Okay, I, I gotta fix that. But uh, that should work now. Let's see if that fixed our problem. 
Yeah, no more issues. Let's see if it works, though. Yeah, that seems to be working. Ah, okay, something else is happening now. But it's only when... Okay, so it actually had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Got him. Okay, so that had nothing to do with that. Can't change the state when flushing queries. Use call defer to set defer to change monitoring state instead. So area, set shape disabled. Why would it set shape disabled? So this is only in the enemy missile scene and uh, explosive instance. Uh, and it is saying that it's happening at this line, which is really interesting. Let's let's trace this back. Um, 30 die, then it goes straight to 20, or no, 20, and then straight to 30 it says. But that's weird. It must be here, right? No, it's saying set disabled. So weird. That's so weird. I don't really know why that's happening. Um, I don't think that setting deferred is going to fix it, but we could give it a shot. So let's just try that. Let's do call underscore deferred. And then we just do add underscore child. And then we do explosion one instance that okay cool okay now I don't think that's gonna work though oh or did it I guess it did okay the fuck do I know <laughs> so that worked uh, no more errors from that um, I think everything's working Except, oh yeah, it's not hitting the land. Yeah, that's that's the problem. I don't know why. I could not tell you why that is whatsoever. Oh my, God. my phone just scared me. Okay. So, I would like to do something as a test. I'm gonna go ahead and add another static body 2D um, to this scene, and I'm just going to add a collision layer, or collision shape. I'm gonna make it normal, and I'm just going to make it a square shape. Okay, so that's gonna be up here. Okay, and then I'm gonna move this just to be like right in the center, and then we'll take this here, and we'll just make it super long. Um, and then if we go to here and we go to collisions, we make the layer uh, land, right? And the mask, we want it to mask with enemy missiles, right? Let's go to enemy missile. Make sure this is on the right layer. It is definitely on the layer enemy missile, okay. And then now if we run it, those should hit that thing. But they're not. They went right through it. It's so weird too because it works with explosions. <gasps> oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I just realized what it was. Uh, okay, so I'll explain to you guys. So right now we've got this on area. You've got several signals. Area entered or body entered. We're now hitting bodies. So we want to say on body entered. Yep. So there's... Ah! Okay, that's game dev, folks. Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so right now we're saying if the area closing layer equals this, okay. Um, body, now we're say, oh yeah, now here we just say die. Okay, cool. Actually, did I already get rid of that? Yeah, I did, okay. So now we just gonna let these guys come and hopefully they'll start impacting the surface. Please, for the love of God. Yes. Yes. We've done it, folks. We've officially freaking done it. Very excited. Very excited. That's, that's the basics. Um, we don't have currently spawning or anything like that. Um, 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 um. 
I mean, we have spawning, but they're, they're spawning very, this is not how we're going to do it. So what's left to do, um, so if we see this, one thing I need to make these guys, but they seem to do basically the same thing. I don't know if these planes even attack you. I know the other guys. I made both the planes and the, the other guys. Obviously, we need to do score, right, um, which is all a lot more complicated. No, was it shooting? I, I'm just gonna watch the point. Yeah, it did shoot. It shot like a lot of missiles. We could also give the missiles like maybe a one in 10 chance to spawn a second missile. That could be interesting. So let's do that. I'm actually gonna do that really quickly because you saw that some of the missiles would diverge. Um, so I'm gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is we'll make var enemy underscore missile underscore scene um, equals preload preload this should be projectile nope enemy missile scene drag that right there okay um, I'm gonna do this on ready. Okay, so there's a few ways that we could do this, right? Um, we could check like every so many seconds. I think I'm actually gonna do it that way because that's probably gonna be the easiest way to explain when I make this uh, an official tutorial. So let's open up the enemy missile scene here. Okay, I'm gonna add a timer node. Okay, super duper handy node. Okay, and then I wonder what the average lifetime of one of these guys is. Um, I never know. Okay, um, I'm trying to think about how to figure this out. I think I'm literally just gonna use the stopwatch on my phone and see how long one of these guys, oh my God, look at that. I left my stopwatch going for three days. Cool, okay. And I'll hit this and we'll start. Oh, I didn't that work. Command B, start. What? Wait, what? Can't really blah, blah, blah. Can't preload a resource at path. Why, because it's cyclic? <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So what we actually need to do here is make this an on var, and we hit, we'll say load. Okay. And so basically, if you don't know, ready is when it enters the scene tree, uh, and we can't preload this because it is itself. It's preloading. It can't preload itself. So now this should work, I think. Okay, but now I haven't got my timer ready. All right, let's try this out. How long is the average path from the top to the bottom? Be. Okay, started my timer. Just to see how long it takes them to get to the bottom there. Okay, so about 10 seconds. Okay, so I'll make a timer right here. Yeah, I don't want this to happen more than once, I don't think. Yeah, so I'll make a timer node right here. Uh, and what I'm going to do, so I'm going to set it to one second. I'm going to set this to physics. Uh, we are not going to set one, sh or yes, we're not going to set one shot because that means it only runs once. We're going to keep it on auto start because I want it to start right when uh, it enters the scene tree. That's what that means. And then we're going to connect the timer timeout signal to our script here. So on timer timeout, uh, we are going to say, hmm, we will say, if rand range here we'll make it so var has doubled uh, has split <laughs> okay uh, equals false by default okay 
then we're gonna say right here, we're gonna say if um, not has underscore split. Actually, we don't have to do it that way. Yeah, we don't have to waste another variable here. Bar has split. Okay, so if rand range, whatever, and then we'll just make sure I say uh, timer dot stop. So that way it won't happen again. Okay, so if rand range uh, zero to um, 100, I'll just do that. Actually, but that's too big of a chance. We'll do zero, even zero to 10. So rand range gives you float values. So zero to 10 is a pretty big value, but if we go zero to 100 um, is greater than uh, we will say. So it should be, it's about 100%. So what percent of the time? Um, maybe let's give them like a 5%. So it's greater than 5.0, I'm sorry, smaller than, should be less than. Uh, so if random range this is less than 5.0, uh, timer dot stop, okay, <clears throat> for one thing. But what we also wanna do uh, is then spawn another missile. So I'm gonna tr see if I can just steal the spawn enemy missile code here. <laughs> and it shouldn't be too, too different here. So I'm gonna paste this. Uh, now, a few things that are going to be different here. Uh, one is that we're gonna say get underscore parent dot add child. Okay. Um, the second thing, oh, this is, let's do this. Okay, just like that. There we go, launch position, and this is going to be equals uh, global position, so self dot global position, um, missile instance dot global position equals launch position missile, um, instance dot rotation equals launch position dot direction to, I mean, technically I actually don't have to do that, but whatever, um, dot direction to, dot to random range that as an angle. Okay. Well, I think and rather than do that, we're gonna say rotation equals um, rotation plus deg to rad. This converts uh, degrees, so we'll give it in degrees and it converts it to radians. Uh, and I'm gonna say 45 degrees. Uh, actually, I think it might be better to do it the other way. We'll, we'll try this and see what happens. So right now it's it's pretty rare, so I doubt that we'll actually see that. But if we make this 10, we might. So ideally, one of these should split off while it's traveling, hopefully. Actually, it's, it's pretty hard to see, isn't it? Um, like, how would you know, right? Well, okay, so there should be only five, I believe. Oh, see, that one split, okay, good. Now, that's obviously too many, though. We don't want that many splitting. So I'm gonna set this to five. This is gonna be a pretty uh, low probability thing to happen. We don't want this happening all the time. So, so one already did it, though, that's great. So only one did it, okay. One more time. There's five. One, one did it. Shit. That's still happening more than I would think. It's already split. Maybe this needs to be real, oh yes, because this needs to be pretty small. So, oh yeah, so I think I'm still printing somewhere. Yeah, here it is, we don't need this anymore. Okay, and then what I do wanna do is do if this, I'm gonna say print uh, split, okay. 
So then what we'll see is we'll see how many are splitting down here. Oh, fuck. It doesn't even matter, though. Yeah, so one split, two split. Okay. So on average, for every five, I would like one to split, probably. And so it's actually insane to me that... Because your chances right now are one in 50. The chances you, you that you will get, it will split, are one in 50. And we have five, I, I can actually figure out the probability. So there are five that are doing it 10 times each. So that's 50. And each time, so that's, that's 50 at a one in 50. So technically this should actually work. So there are 50 chances uh, we can even do it for one to make it easier. So for one, there are 10 chances per its life. Thus, the, the chance that it would happen should be um, a fifth. Yes, right? Because that means it will happen once for every five. So right now, the chance that it's happening is one in 50, right? And then, so if we have 10 of them, that's one in 50 times 10, which is, or no, plus, yeah. It should be. So this should only be happening once, but it's con it's constantly happening twice, which is really interesting. Split already. I randomized it, right? So that only happened once. Okay. So I don't even need to pay attention to that. We're just looking at the split here. Yeah, that one didn't do it at all. So I think that means we're about right. The, I think the double splits were kind of a fluke, and obviously that's okay for that to happen occasionally. I mean, that's how probability works. Even if it's rare, it could happen five times, um, theoretically. It just won't usually. So yeah, I'm actually I'm pretty happy with this. This is actually working very well. Okay, so it has the opportunity to split. So I guess actually what I, I'll do, I'm pretty freaking hungry right now, you guys. Um, but I don't want to stop stream. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just grab like a quick snack and leave you guys with some music for like not even five minutes while I get myself a snack, take a piss, stuff like that. Um, and then uh, we'll come in and the next thing I want to do is make the trails. So you can see on these guys what's happening is they've got obviously these interesting looking line trails. And I'm going to try and recreate this as close to exactly as I can, uh, although I'm not sure if I can. Um, and if not, I'm just going to use particles. And I have an idea how particles would work as well. But uh, yeah, we need to see. We need to see. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. All right. So I will see you guys in in like ten seconds, a minute. Please don't leave. I'll be back. Um, and yeah. All right. Actually, I should probably get some music on. I, there's really great music by this guy. And if you're making games, you should check this guy out. His name is DOS88. He's on YouTube. Um, it's DOS88. Yeah, you can see those are... And Flow State, that's great. Because this is actually a newer one. These are all really old songs. But Flow State is new. And it's like... That's what I'm about to play for you guys. Because it's fantastic. So, uh, if I go to Video Code, Audio Assets, Music, DOS88 Tracks. Um, and then I should be able to play Far Away. Tell me how that is on the uh, sound there. But I should definitely be back before this is over. So, yeah, I'll be back. I'm back. Just kidding. Uh, I actually just realized that it's not playing the uh, music because <laughs> I don't have desktop capture. So what I'm going to do, I should just have to do this, then copy.
I'm back. Um, oh, I don't know if everyone on stream has met the beautiful Oopsies. Sorry about that. I'm back. Um, I don't know if everybody on stream has met the beautiful uh, Beanie. But this is she. She's my baby. She's my daughter. Yes, I know she looks funky, but there was a weird mutation at birth that has made her extra adorable. Um, yeah. So, uh, I would love if, okay, my game came out back on 420. That's actually how fast I read. Um, I read at a fourth grade level. Wait, I thought you hadn't made a game yet. What? Dashin? Wait, is someone talking that I can't see? Like, who are you talking to, huh? Uh, I didn't know you, like, how did you make a game if you don't use something else other than Godot? It's not possible. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, I just uh, didn't imagine that. I guess if you program in C Sharp, I just assumed you, like, did that for your job or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what have I got? I'm actually going to have to put my dog down because she's going to try and eat everything I'm trying to eat right now. I got some pita chips, I got some Greek salad. We're in this. Uh, I actually do, I'm kind of down to just let this play while I snack a little bit. And then kind of like observe and talk about it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Come here. Come here. Yeah, rub bam bam. Yeah, I give you, I give you a little piece of shit. No, no bam, no bam. Be careful. <gasps> Bean. I totally missed. I have another dog too, but this is this is like my dog. The other one's my girlfriend's dog. She like to be held like baby, except for right now, probably not because she knows their food. Like, Where's the food? Where's the food? She really hates kisses, so she'll <laughs> she will not let me kiss her. But um, no. she's great, best dog I've ever had, by far. Yeah, I love pugs. We got two pugs. My other dog is a pug as well. Um, but who knows when that. Lady will come back to me. See ya. So obviously I need to make the enemies. I made the bomb sprite. I need to make the bombs. It looks like the bombs, maybe the missiles do, come down faster. Now later levels will be like, watch this one. Oh yeah, the missiles are coming down way faster. It was not tremendously difficult to um, implement, but it might screw up an idea I had for making the, the bullet trails. It didn't screw it up, but it makes it too complicated to put in a beginner tutorial, which is my hope with making this game. Well, thanks, Adrian. Alright. I swear I got hummus out here. I don't know where that is. Okay. Well, that's cool. I could make that title screen as well. That wouldn't be too hard either. That's enough chips. Greek salad, very, very healthy.
probably won't put the Atari logo. Thinking about it. Should have gotten a spoon. Something I actually do want to figure out is uh, how many missiles you start with. Also, we have three, so you start with 30. One, two, three, and then they reset every level. Or C. Okay. Oh, this is cool. Okay. To direct defense missiles. Total men missiles at enemies. Interesting. Killer satellites. Hmm. Oh! That's fucking cool. I didn't know about that. Dude, it's, it's a cool game, and it's not, like, too, too hard. Thank you, dude. I appreciate the compliment, for sure. It came out in the early 1980s. That's so cool. And you know what these guys were doing <laughs> was just so difficult. Like, they're literally, like, coding every single thing just moving up. There's no game engine. You know what I mean? 1980. They're like taking every millisecond and telling it to draw something here. And if this happens, don't draw that thing there. You know what I mean? Like, beyond me. I tried making my first game with Pi Game. Oh, interesting. That's so funny because I'm the total opposite, but, um,. Yeah, I guess I could. Yeah. I don't see why not. We'll see. Because this might be like more than just a few. Uh... Well, what I'm definitely going to do is update or upload all my um, code to GitHub. And so, oh, there's the fucking hummus. Um, so you could definitely, obviously, check that out and then follow along as I go. But I get that you don't go video. So I'll try. I'll see how much work it is. But if it ends up being, like, a really long process, then maybe not. Like, if I have to make 15 videos to explain it, no. Three videos, four videos, five videos, probably. I think that would probably be good because I'm sure there are people like you who would appreciate a transcript. Um, okay. So this is actually, this is epic <laughs> that I found this. Um, it, just, it debuted in literally 1980. That was so cool. Oh, and an updated version was released in 1999. I think I've seen that one, a 3D version. Wow, okay. I don't think I wanna play a 3D version. 2D is definitely cool for me. Um, Missile Command is programmed to go as high as 256 waves, but this level of gameplay can only be reached by the most skilled players. A total of three bases must be defended, each co coming with 10 defensive missiles. 
So right now we're not using those bases, although it could it'd be pretty easy to do that. So I think I'll, what I'm probably gonna do is make a beginner tutorial, make this game very fresh, very easy, and then I'm gonna make the uh, difficult version. Hey, don't you bite my leg. Don't you bite my leg. Don't you bite my leg. Put her up here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going for big belly rub, big belly rub. Um, 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 um. See, we're learning about, you could see. She actually does watch the computer, particularly when there's food on there. It's actually really hilarious. She's the only dog I've ever had that, like I can tell, like, I'll come by and like she looks and she's like, oh, she's just programming, I don't really care. But um, yeah. But players must shoot both missiles and MRRVs. Oh, oh, okay. Those are launch, but yeah, okay. Cause I was like, you only get to shoot missiles. Shooting a smart one yields 25 points. Oh, this, this is epic. This is like everything I need to make this game work. I'm so psyched I found this. Oh fuck, I forgot. If I try to eat with his dog, dude, she's gonna, I'm so hungry. She's gonna go fucking berserk trying to eat this shit right now. Okay. Okay, I'll let you back up in like 10 minutes. But I'm going to eat while I code now. Um, so. Mm hmm. Hummus and pita, dude? Look. Genius. Okay. So. What I like to do. I guess we'll start with the um, player missile. Why did I do that? Okay. And then what I'm going to do here. Oh, no. I feel that 100% Dragon Pit games. These would be a bunch of, I'm gonna remake this as a very organized tutorial with a bunch of like five to 10 minute videos covering one topic at a time. Like making the enemy missile. There's one video for this. But this is just, I figured I might as well stream myself making it for the first time. Then I'm gonna clean it up and then make a tutorial series on it. Okay. So here's this. I'm gonna add something called a line 2D node. As you might guess. Actually, what I need to do with this now is actually. So th there's a setting called self modulate, and that means that we're only gonna modulate this. Whereas if we click modulate, it's gonna modulate everything. <laughs> I can't let you up. I'm so sorry. She's so cute, you guys. You have no idea. She's biting my pocket right now. Okay. Won't move. I'll let her up. Okay. With ten. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. Do you got all these? This is really cool. Actually, this is going to be even easier than I think. Um, the only thing that's complicated about the line 2D is that it uses um, local coordinates instead of global coordinates. So, for instance, in this scene, 10 10, or it's a uh, 10 0, is right here, right? Like you line up the 10 there, 0 there. But 10 0 is here, but then if we move our player missile in this to like over here, uh, obviously 10 10 in global coordinates is right here, but 10 10 in our uh, local coordinates is just 10, it's still just 10 in front of the player, right? Or 10 in front of the missile. So that's that's what local and global coordinates are, and the line 2D uses lo or local coordinates. So I'm gonna add two points on line 2D. I think I'm only gonna make the width one, assuming that's in pixels. Um, whatever. And then the points 
or a vector array. We're going to make this too long. Point zero is going to be zero, zero. Then what we're going to do right here is do, we need to do it right here, on ready var. So I've never done this before. I'm just kind of um, winging it, and I think this will work. So on ready var uh, line 2D equals line 2D. And then what we should be able to do is grab this. Points two. So should we be able to go function ready? Oh, come on, give me it. Okay, function ready. Um, print uh, line two D dot, and then we want to grab. So it is. Oh yeah, it's just points dot points okay um from points we want to grab um, one thing so I think so it's gonna be just a regular array here Okay, so that's how you grab it like that. I think in Python it might be different, but okay. So then, yeah, in Python it is uh, parentheses. I think <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And then dictionaries is only only dictionaries. This arrays are that. Okay, so points one. Okay. Um, dot. Uh, well, actually. Let's try that. What does this, what does this print out here? Zero, zero. Okay. That's actually dope. So then what we can do, I say, I'm just actually gonna do this. So I'm gonna, cause we only need that. Ah, oh, no, we probably need, yeah, okay. Sorry. So we're gonna do this. And we'll delete the ready function here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is that during the physics process, we are going to say, oh no, right here, say line point one equals uh, goal position. Okay, and then we're going to go here, and um, I want to do index uh, or the visibility show behind parent. Okay, and then what that should do is that, as long as they're shooting, I was just, oh, I did that for player missile, okay. Whoa. Ah, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so it's actually kind of working, but not totally working, um, even though it didn't look like it was even remotely working. <gasps> we just need to set the um, point zero in the ready function here. Right there. Okay. So function function ready. And I'll say line two D dot points uh, zero equals global position. Okay. Just like that. <laughs> God, she's so cute. She's so cute. Now I'm confused. Hmm. Oh, because it's global position. I told you. That gets confusing. Okay, cool. Let's check that out. I mean, it still is only appearing for a second, which is weird. 
ah, this needs to be. Hmm. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, I don't think that's gonna work, but let's see. I don't understand why it's going away. Like it shouldn't be going away. Huh. Uh, you know what? Gonna need to continually set this. So I just realized, I'm not just in the ready function. So so we'll say function ready actually pass. I'm gonna say var start underscore position equals vector two dot zero. Um, although this is basically just a placeholder, um, in the array function, we say start position. Hmm. So. The problem is that this is moving as we move, right? This should be position, okay? This should still not work, but I'm just interested. I don't particularly understand though why this isn't working, right? Here, let's do this. Full position dot two for local two underscore. Yeah, so it's too local. That's weird that where is it? Yeah, too local. Okay. Oh, and then you, okay, okay, that's why. <laughs> so we do two underscore local global position. Okay, so that should work right there. Um, equals two underscore local and then global position. Okay. I don't think that's going to work right away, but I think that should give us some progress. And it gives us somehow a worse result. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But, so it is going to move with the sprite. Hmm. But I would like for this, I guess the whole thing is moving, isn't it? Maybe, actually, maybe you're onto something. Maybe I should just spawn this. But, ah, see, that's going to be too confusing for uh, newbies. But, so what would work is if I just spawned this, gave it access to this node. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, so I'm gonna have to do it. That's by far the best way to do it. All right. Mm. Maybe I'll make it again, but this is gonna work.
Okay. Okay. Do this. We're going to delete this. Make a new scene. This is actually going to be pretty good, though. So, line 2D. Okay. And uh, pool vector array. We're going to give it two points right here. Default color. I actually want this to be... Um, Oh, it actually doesn't matter. We'll, we'll make it this, sure. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna call this um, missile trail. Okay, I'll save it in scenes, main level missiles. There we go, save. Okay, um, and then we'll do this is add a script. And then I'm say constant, um, Player, actually, player underscore color equals color, and then constant uh, enemy underscore color equals color. Okay, now we see what these are. So go here, go to the raw values 0 0.37, 0 0.43, 0 0.91. Uh, 0 0.37, 0 0.43, 0 0.91, then 1. Let's see if that's right because my memory is terrible. 374391, 374391. Okay, cool. And then we will set this back to now the enemy color. We don't actually want that color, we want. Whoa, Sprite. That's humongord. Okay. Humongord. Okay. We want this color. Grab that. I grab the right color. Make sure. Okay. Cool. We'll add that there. And we'll click on that again. We can delete this. Go right here. Go here. Raw. Okay. 1.36.8. There we go. 1. 0 0.36. 0 0.8. One, okay, and you should also have zeros. Just like that, okay, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, the position is relative to the parent, and what I was hoping to do is just constantly set those to be different than that, but that's just stupid. Mm. It really just is. I don't understand why the um, line 2D has to use local coordinates. Personally, but eh. whatever. Hmm. Before I get too much into this, I am. I do actually really want to try something. I'm too deep. Okay. Okay, so, ready, start position equals global position, okay, and then here, this, we're going to say equals um, start position dot two, or I'm sorry, two underscore local start position, okay, just like that. So now we have a global position that always exists and we're just gonna keep setting that point equal to that position. Um, now the, the point, the second point, yeah, I'm gonna try doing that because that's only two lines of code to be honest. Okay. And this is what John Watson does. They're similar to it in his, uh, he makes trails for his, he's the guy who makes gravity ace. And he's constantly spawning and deleting points and adding them and changing their uh, point and position, like shit like that. This game looks great, runs great. You got three of them going at all times, has them on all the ships, so clearly Godot can handle it. <clears throat> 
So equals, yeah, two local. Oh no, this, I think this could just be position. Actually, we don't even need to set that one. Ugh, okay. Inbound set index zero on base pool vector with about, oh, because we haven't, okay. Okay. Hey, motherfucker. Okay. And now we just set the width. There to one. Well, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> and there we go. There's that. Um, now, what color do we really want these to be? I think for our missiles, I actually do want to set these to a white, um, like that. And then they'll, then the trail will be. Nice. OK. Not work. The only problem with that, obviously, is that it's not drawing the lines jaggedy like that. Which is kind of a bummer. Um, and I think on the enemy missile, I'm going to try a different tactic, which is to use a particles. Okay. Um, like a hundred, probably. Okay. And then we'll do drawing process material, new particles material. Okay. Mission shape point. Direction. And then, oh, actually, I think this might work better. Um. <clears throat> Hmm. Oh, I actually want to dip this. Local coordinates off. Align Y on. Okay. And then Gravity is zero. Doesn't really matter. Also doesn't really matter. And then, it's gonna be closer to drawing pixels on the screen without actually having to draw pixels. <laughs> okay. Obviously, we need to add a lot more, and I think I could probably. That's the problem, though, isn't it? That's the problem, though, isn't it? That's is probably something that would be better for a shader, right? Okay, so. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work, but so we put this to a thousand. Not great, especially when we have like a lot of these on screen. That would kind of suck to have the GPU process a thousand particles times, like literally five thousand particles. Okay. Oh well, actually, we should probably try this first, and then increase the amount of time to be like ten seconds or eleven seconds actually. That's definitely an interesting look. I don't mind that at all. Um, 
And then now we might even be able to get away with just doubling that. Mm -mm. I only need to do more than double that, but I also don't think this is going to work. I think a line 2D, if I could figure it out, would definitely be the better option here. I don't know. That's probably not great for the game to have to do all that work. And, um... Hmm. I mean, I just wonder if someone has done that. Okay, so maybe there is I don't want to end a list though. Hmm. So why is that happening? Determine the direction difference and radius between vector points. Okay, round precision, the smoothest of the rounded joints and cast. Maybe. The lines border, I don't want that. I want the, oh, I thought that was, okay. I mean, it's not bad, but it's just not exactly what I was hoping for. You know what I mean? I wanted some more jaggedy stuff. It's like too, it's too good. Can I make this, oh, maybe I can make this 0.5? That's not helping. Point 0.1. One. I think that is actually making it jaggedy though. And then now, I don't think this is gonna work at all. <laughs> well, we'd have to do more than two, right? We have to do 10, 10. Yeah, it's not doing at all what I was hoping it might possibly potentially do. We definitely wanna keep it at one there. Um, Okay, so, yeah, I don't know. Thanks, Nova. Well, so, that was my thought, too. But apparently the anti-aliasing is already off. So, and you can see, if you look really closely, that it is actually a tiny bit jaggy. Come on. Of course. It is actually a tiny bit jaggy right there because it's not anti-aliased. But it's drawing too many, I guess, would be the... Um... So I don't really know. I don't really know why. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> if I really wanted to get into it, it 
Yeah. It's so funny because he's trying to, he doesn't want this. And that's exactly what I do want. So weird. Hmm. Yeah, because it looks like everyone else is trying to do the opposite of what I'm trying to do, right? Um, let's just go to uh, Missile Trail, which I'm going to be deleting. For right now, we can grab. Oh, I don't want to. I just want to grab one and say 10, 10, like that. Set this at one. Let's go 100, 100. Yeah, like why is that drawing that so perfectly? Uh, oh, clearly that's a vector right now. Right, let's do uh, 300. Okay. So it's a little jaggy, but it's not it's not the jaggy that I would want. Um, yeah, that should definitely be more jaggy. I mean, a lot of the shit. Hmm. I really don't know how I'd fix that. Um, because I'm, so I'm not adding multiple points. That is probably honestly the solution. You're right. You're a genius. You're a genius. You are. I mean... You should go write physics textbooks because you just you just gave me the solution. Excuse me. So, what we're doing here is telling the most recent one. Oh, actually, I don't know if that it would work. What I'm actually trying to do right now, we're, what we're doing is just telling the most recent one to stay at our local position. But what we could do is also this, right? This should still work just normally because the last point on the array. But then we could do is uh, something like this. We'll make var frames equals zero, and then here I'll do frames plus equals one if frames uh, equals equals. We'll say not 60, we'll do 30. So that's every half a second, right? Frames equals zero. And then we'll say line 2D dot is it add. There we go, add point. Okay, so by default, it's going to add it to the end, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And then we're just going to say, um, Global position, say two underscore. No, just position. Hmm. Oh no. But then, then we can't do it from here any longer. Then we have to make a line trail. So, they don't offer any way for you to adjust the resolution other than actually changing your window size. So my window size at, at base is 40 by 270, right? I'm drawing a single pixel at a time, but we're expanding to 1920 by 1080 in order to make it actually like an HD game. It's pixel art, but it's HD pixel art, right? It's big. You don't have to go into see it. 
And the problem with the um, line 2D is that it draws a vector and then puts the final result on the, uh, the thing there. What? Let's open this up here. Okay. So points with width curve, default color, gradient texture, texture mode, joint mode. Maybe we'll check that. Um, round precision, anti-alias. Add plate clear counts. Blah, 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 blah. Line joint sharp. The lines joints will be pointy. If the sharp limit is greater than the rotation of a point, it becomes a bevel joint instead. Oh, so I did the opposite. I want to put this to like, uh, is this in radians? Let's see. Well, first off, uh, that idea would work the adding more points in the array, but uh, the problem is that we would then have to, for every single one of those points, like do what we're doing here, which is constantly re-put its position to be that position um, in the global coordinate scheme, which is not what you want to do. Uh, obviously, because then we're going to have like, well, we'd only have about five per um, missile. But then for each of those points, we'd have to keep track of where they are um, in global coordinate space. Convert that to then local coordinates and then draw them at that point. Every physics frame, which you can do and there probably wouldn't be no, probably would not be any issue. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to see we could do something like this. So I want to go here. So if we go all the way up and go to sharp limit and radians between directors, light join sharp. Okay. So first off, I'm going to set this to uh, what's 360 degrees in radians. Uh, deck to red. Six point two eight three. Okay. So I'll just make this six, okay, around precision one. Now I want to go to joint mode. It is sharp, okay, uh, and I'm very interested to see if that did anything. Nope, no, it did not, come on. No, it's still making the jaggies. It's so weird. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's, it's one of those things that just we should not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put my food away real quick. I'll be back, but I shouldn't be spending this much time on this. <laughs> So the line 2D is a, a child of the missile and that's why I can't do that. So I thought about making this missile trail where I would spawn it simultaneously when I spawn the missile and then it would just track the global position of the missile and then set its its last bounding point or last uh, point in the array to be the location of that missile, right? And that would work. I mean, maybe I should give that a shot. But the problem is this is going to be a tutorial for absolute beginners when I actually make it. So I don't want to... Um, Move, move to trash. I don't want to make it too confusing. And that that is like, if it were my game, I probably would do that. But uh, we're just going to keep it simple, stupid. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. The other thing is these these are all right <coughs> color. That's the color we want. 
Okay, for the crosshairs. Okay. But there we go. We got, I mean, we've got those lines. They're working. And then we can just do the exact same thing on the enemy missile. So we'll add a line 2D here. We'll go set this to 1. Set the default color to this uh, red like that. Put the, we'll add two points to the array here. And then I'm literally going to copy paste this right here. Okay. And we'll come right here and then do this. Okay, line 2D points 1 equals that. Oh, okay, that's why. On ready bar, line 2D equals line 2D. Okay, cool. And then I think that'll work. Hey, you know what? Those aren't bad. Those look kind of jaggy. I mean, not perfect, but, you know, not awful. I think in, in the original game, too, when you hit them, the lines did just go away. So that's fine. I was going to make them fade out. I mean, obviously, it's not as perfect, and we there's ways around that and fixing that that we could definitely, definitely do. Actually, for instance, is that... I actually don't want to quit this. Is that we could just... Interesting. Uh, we could just make... Uh, like the the width of the line change so you can add if you're on a line 2d you can add a width curve and then we could just make that change constantly right um, so that way it would add some jagginess to it i don't want to do that all right i'm putting this hummus back in the fridge stop talking to you with my mouthful um so i'm gonna do that real quick we'll be back in 10 seconds I'm back. I love it. I got a little extra snack there because I was hungry. I 
All right. All right. So, got those basics done. I do want to go ahead and go here, go visibility, show behind parent. Now we got that. Oh, but it, I guess it's just it's just because it doesn't look like it's behind the parent, but it is, right? Damn it. Oh, I didn't need to waste that extra missile. But okay, I mean, that's the very basics of gameplay um, done, right? I mean, obviously we would also like to have enemies. I don't know if this guy ever lets an enemy get all the way across the screen, but I do want to see that. He's going to take it out right away, yeah. when they get all the way across the screen. I'd assume they just fly right back, but that's okay. All right, so uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make the enemies next because they, they seem to be pretty simple to make. So uh, we're done with the missiles and explosions and stuff like that for right now at least. Okay, and um, yeah, still not gonna make it officially a game yet. Let's go ahead and make these enemies what I want them to be. I think for this game, they might be okay just being, uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm moving everything in terms of coordinates here. So I might just make these guys, yeah, I think I am just gonna make these guys, um, let's go here, project, like like areas that are just moving around. Um, so I'm gonna go to 2D physics, say enemy, yeah, we'll just say enemy. Enemy there. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. And then, so for this, this is going to be an area 2D. Okay. We're going to add a collision shape. And we're also going to add a sprite. Okay. I don't think the behavior of them, and we can actually check right here. Uh, killer satellites. These enemies move stealthily, launching under smart bombs. Let's see. Okay. Icons, bases, bombs, killer satellites, cities, smart bombs, crosshairs, missiles. It doesn't actually talk about the planes. Um, okay, let's see. Missile, command, enemies. It's a fucking board game? Oh, no, it's trying to get me to buy it? Wait, what does this say here? That's a review? No, thank you. Um, gameplay. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if I go. For enemy fire, incoming enemy weapons. Enemy weapons, enemy missiles. Huh. What is happening? Oh, Discord's going crazy right now. I don't understand. I don't. It's like, why would you not have the enemies? Added a UFO to the player's enemies. Interesting. Whatever. Uh, I'm not going to make smart missiles. I'm just going to have these be the same thing, and we're just going to make sprites for them. So uh, we'll do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And we'll go back up here to, I guess we'll, we'll just save it to main level. Uh, I'm going to add a new folder. I'm going to call these enemy, because I'm only going to make one enemy here. Uh, and I'll save this as enemy. Save it right there. Of course, name this enemy as well. I'm going to add a script to it. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Now... We should be able to go to enemy, and we've got both of these here. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is say constant, and we're going to say plane uh, img equals this. 
Okay. And then we're going to say constant uh, satellite score IMG. Beanie! Satellite image equals, and then we're going to do this. I feel bad. I, I've been pushing my dog away because I was eating, and now she doesn't come to me. Bean bean. Ew. That'll get him. Ten times out of ten. I'm sorry, Joni. I want beanie. See, my dog's too smart to fall for that. That's what I. That's the noise I make when I feed them. So uh, they typically don't think that I'm lying to them, which is their fault, because obviously, like, grow up kid, people fucking lie. Oh, here she is. Oh, like a bye -bye. This is Bean Bean. Okay. She gonna sit on my lap. You will hear some snorts, almost guaranteedly. Okay, but we've got this. So we've got that. I don't know why I did that. Okay. And so essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I won't make it an export var, but I'm gonna say variable um, type, let's say. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to be an int. Well, I don't need to do that. Type equals one. Okay. And then we're gonna say function ready. Okay, we're gonna say, well, actually we'll just do this. We'll do match. We'll say if type equals equals one, pass, else, pass. Okay, well, I don't like that. Okay, there you go. Then we're gonna say, I wanna get the on ready bar. We'll put that under here. So we'll say on ready bar sprite equals sprite. And then this will just be the first thing we do. So we're gonna get the sprite there. We're gonna say sprite dot texture equals load plane dot image or sprite dot texture equals load uh, satellite. I don't think that's how you spell satellite, but yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, so that way we can do, and then what I'll do just for right now though is keep this there. Okay, so there's our plane. Okay, let's see. And then the collision shape we're gonna also have to make differently. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see what, what let's see what these collision shapes look like here. So they're pretty generous for the plane, or pretty actually scampy for the plane. I would like to see. There we go. Oh, that was he was right on there. Is this where he loses? Oh yeah, I thought he played again. It's like impossible to see. Because he's nailing them dead on. I want to know like how that looks cool. I don't know. It's tough. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, so for this one, I'll do a capsule shape. Transform, rotation degree, 90, like that. I'll we'll make this a little bit smaller, like this. I wanna keep this long, oopsies. Keep this long, like that. Um, typically in games, you do wanna give them a little bit of an advantage uh, in terms of their collision shapes. So I think this is probably fine. So, We've got radius five. Oh, can I not undo that? Okay, this should be six. <laughs> radius six, and then this will be 30. 30. Okay. Um, yeah. Now what I wanna do with this. I think what I'll do is then save this and this will be um, plane underscore capsule underscore shape. 
plane capsule shape dot trez and we're going to save this in the enemy folder as well okay and now what we're going to do is go right to here stick this one in here and then we're going to change this to be uh we're going to say make unique oopsie not whatever let's do it that way make sure it's unique and then we want this to be come on about right there so make this there something like that i mean it's just a circle but well in that case we might as well actually just do a circle new circle shape and that's actually probably good that's actually probably solid right off the bat um so yeah so i'll go ahead and then i'll save this and uh we'll say um set shape trez okay save um, and then what I'm going to do in here is something very, very similar. And that is that we're going to go constant, uh, sat, well, actually let's do this. Sat underscore IMG place all. Okay. You can do here and then plane underscore IMG place all okay and sat underscore shape <clears throat> these actually should technically be <laughs> all in caps so we'll do that plane underscore img place all this sat underscore img place all and this should be sat shape okay equals uh, and then we want to go to sat shape dot trez right there okay uh, and then I want to go right here and say constant constant um, plane underscore shape equals and we'll do this as well okay <clears throat> so then we'll say we'll do another on ready bar here on ready bar call shape equals close in shape 2d and then we'll say call shape dot shape equals load and we'll say plane uh, shape okay then oopsies very similar here oops I didn't copy it probably could have just typed it in that amount of time say sat underscore shape okay so now what will happen is that depending on when we spawn this is when we'll set this right and so we'll set it and we'll say either type one or type two and if it's type one that means plane if it's type two that means it's going to be satellite and then of course um <clears throat> sorry out of water okay that's cool i don't need water who needs water water makes you weak that's what my football coach used to say and many kids died um no one died but you know we hated him not, not true. We love my football coach, but uh, he's kind of a dick about water. <laughs> so type one is this, and you do this, and it's going to set the texture and shape to that. Uh, everything else is going to be exactly the same for these guys. So we'll, for instance, have um, right var speed, uh, and this is going to be equal to probably the same as the missile, I'll say, like maybe five. Let's see how fast these guys moving. Let's go into the early rounds. Do we see a plane yet? There we go. I think their movement speed is actually consistent the whole time. It looks like they're, yeah, they are moving a wee bit faster than they are. So if we go to enemy missiles, they're moving at 0.5. So the enemy should probably move at like, what, 1.5? Uh, so three times their speed, that's fine. Okay, um, and then what we're gonna do here is just do function um, physics process delta. Okay, and this should, be, we're not gonna use delta here because I just don't use delta. Okay, and we're gonna say, I do use delta, but right now I just don't care for this game. Actually, I probably should go back and fix that. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I'll do it correctly here and then I'll fix the other ones real quick. Um, okay, so. Ah, but then we're gonna need our speed to be way higher. But that's actually better. No, is it? 
Yes, yes it is. Okay, so we're gonna say global position plus equals um, I'm gonna make another variable here. So we're gonna say var direction equals factor two dot right, okay. Um, <clears throat> was on my computer okay uh, plus equals uh, oopsies we're gonna say direction times speed times delta like that and then we're probably gonna need so if it's if we wanted it to be 1.5 we'd want to do 1.5 times 60 yeah so what's 1.5 times 60 I should be able to do this that's 60 plus that's 90 okay Speed here is going to be 90. And then if we go over to our enemy missile, speed here is going to be 30. And then we just multiply times delta. Uh oh, well, here, let's see. Times delta. Let's see if that works. It's an enemy missile. It seems they do seem to be going a little bit faster. That's a little too fast, I'd say. Go that to uh, 25. That's about right. Okay, cool. And then we'll go to our player missile. Speed 10. Uh, this is going to be 60 times 10, so it's going to be 600. And then again, right here, we'll just multiply times delta. That's all I got to do. Okay. Okay, so everything's working. Ooh, ooh. I don't know if that picked up on um, camera, but that was a crack. Let's get a crack a lack in it. <laughs> I don't know why, did that not save us or like, why would it do that? Okay, anyway, so we've got that speed 90, that's good. Yeah, times delta, it's just gonna move across the screen to the right. Uh, now what I'm going to do is add a visibility notifier. Visibility notifier, okay. And then what I'm gonna do, uh, yeah, we'll just leave it there. Okay, and I'm gonna connect the on-screen exited signal. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and we're gonna say direction times equals, oh fuck. Negative one. So the problem, it, this should only admit, admit emit once. So let's do print out. Okay, and then let's, we could just run the scene here. So it shouldn't, it'll emit after it passes right here. Okay, so that's working exactly how I wanted it. Not exactly, but close to how I wanted it to work there. And then the other thing we need to do is then do sprite dot uh, flip h. And now it'll go back and forth. We also, it's moving way too fast, clearly. <laughs> so I'm gonna change this to 60, see how that goes. That's like a, that's a little closer to what I think I was expecting. And you can see once this leaves the screen, it'll come, oh, but it didn't flip the sprite. Why didn't it flip the sprite? Why? It's like, it's blatantly disregarding my command. We can always do this. Um, scale times negative one. Also, okay, times equals. Oh my God. Not blatantly disregarding shit. 
Because I'm an idiot. Ah, okay, so it is actually easier to do this way. Scale um, times equals negative one. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay, and then we'll run this, and now it should work. Because that way it's just two lines of code, and it's going to work exactly the same way. Um, so do this, goes off the screen, should be coming back going the other direction. Ah, I see. Scale dot x. <laughs> And that should be good. Um, now, the question is, do I want it to remain off the screen for a little bit longer? So I think what I'll actually do is just set our scale to this. Uh, and then, we, I wanna see something. So if I grab this one, and I put it, like let's say, off considerably here. Like, like somewhere over there. Okay, actually, we can do this. We can go here. And then we want the transform, um, the X to be, so it, we know its speed is 60 and it's moving that every frame. So we want that times how many frames? Uh, 30 seconds, or 30 frames would be half a second. So let's just do 30, it's big. That's uh, almost certainly not good. Shouldn't be doing that. Okay, anyway, now if I were to go here and change the form scale to negative one. Okay, good, so that is working. Okay, this might work. Because I don't know if in the game it hasn't come back right away, because I haven't seen that happen yet. Maybe I can actually just play that. That would probably help. That's actually so stupid. This is clearly <laughs> way too big. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's like three times the screen size. Let's do negative um, 90. Okay, that should work. Because I want it to have a little bit of delay after it gets off the screen uh, before it turns back around. Yo, Burke, what's going on, man? The OG, Let's see. That's, I think that's pretty good. I think that's about the n amount of time that uh, I want it to be doing stuff like that. Should be turning around any second now. There it is. Ay. That might even be a little too much. Let's just do, just do negative, uh, negative 60. That's fine. Okay, that's cool. Um, now we want to make them shoot. I think they technically are supposed to shoot different bullets, but I'm not going to have them do that. Uh, I'm going to have them shoot the same bullet because I'm trying to make this simple. So, I mean, but yeah, uh, maybe I'll have the satellites just drop bombs. I haven't even made the bombs yet, but uh, okay. So, we are going to say gonna go here and we're gonna say var um, bum, 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 bum. missile we'll do uh, enemy underscore missile equals preload enemy missile scene okay enemy missile underscore tsn okay and then of course uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a timer node. Okay, I'm gonna set this to physics. Um, how much time does that take you to fly across the screen? Okay, and... Uh, Okay, that's about eight seconds. So I actually do want to set this not to physics. I want to set this back to idle. Uh, so it's eight seconds. So basically what I want is every two seconds, 
Uh, reset this on auto start. I want this to go off. Timeout. Go right here. Okay. Um, I think I only want it to shoot once per flyby. I don't. Th I don't know if you guys are. Are they have two health? You have to shoot them twice. Trying to see if he shoots more than once per flyby. That looked like he shot right in the center. There's one shot. He's only shooting once there. That's not really. go like over here because I think he dies over here. Damn it. So it is two shots on these guys. Probably only. Oh, that's interesting though. It has those lights looking like they're flashing, which I could easily do, but I'm also like. Okay. Oh, that's not actually. I do want to keep this up. It's handy. Okay, well, so essentially what we're going to do. Okay, so yeah, here's what we're going to do. So we're going to go. We're going to make another bar. Bar has underscore shot okay we set this equal to false um we're gonna set say has underscore shot uh equals false okay and then here we're gonna say if rand range i'll do this to randomize okay Oh, sorry, I don't know how long you said that, Burke. How long ago you said that? Um, my other game, Perry, the Dreamcatcher, if that's what you're referring to, actually went horribly. I don't think it's a bad game, but uh, it did not do well uh, in the uh, competition. This game, the, the tower defense game, actually did extremely well. In fact, I didn't realize this until very, very recently. Um, actually, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is, nope, not that either. Game off 2020. They have a video here. And I'm one of the, uh... there we go. Yeah, there it was. Look at that. They put me on, this is like the, this is GitHub. GitHub made this video and there's my game. Like that's so sick. I love that. Um, but yeah, so that one did pretty well, but the Perry the Dreamcatcher, I still think it's a good game, but other people didn't enjoy it. So you live, you learn, you live, you laugh, you love, you eat, you pray, you love. <laughs> Eat, pray, love. Okay. If rand range. Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. Yeah, actually, we'll do it this way. So we'll say if has underscore. Now nah, we'll. Yeah. Okay. If not has underscore shot. Okay. Uh, then we'll do. Well, we can. We might as well do this. And. Rand range. Uh, what do I want this to be? First, let's do this. And rand range uh, zero to five is uh, greater than hello oh jesus i did you did yep thank you okay timer dot that water start looks a little suspicious what water in the kitchen i haven't filled it up so oh. um, 
I'm live streaming. You are? Yeah, I'm going ham, dude. Yeah. Let's actually, I'm interested, you guys. How long have I been doing this? Have you set a world record or something? Uh, actually, it doesn't tell me how long I've been doing this for. Uh-oh. That's not what I wanted to do. It's a bummer. Now it's not quite, uh, make this a bit larger because it's clearly not. Then I think I need to keep that one open. Why? Okay, let's go this. Okay, so I'm just trying to, I accidentally, actually that's why I can't see the chat anymore, so I'm trying to figure this back out. Go live. Okay, click this. All right, now I think this will work once it's done loading in. There we go, okay. Streams back. Four hours and 45 minutes? Holy crap. That's my record, for sure. Okay, anyway, so now what we're doing, so if, if not has shot and ran rage 0 to 5 is greater than um, 2.5, right? Then we're gonna, then has underscore shot equals false, I'm sorry, true, right? Vundaba, vundaba, vundaba. Okay, has shot equals true, right? Uh, and then we're gonna shoot. So uh, we are going to, well, I mean, I'm actually just gonna go in here and do despawn enemy missile and copy and paste this exactly here. Okay, is that just like that? Okay, and then again, we're just say get underscore. Actually, what we wanna do is go to enemy missile and then wherever I did it, right here, here's what we want to do, this, May, no, 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 enemy, okay, do this, then do that, there we go, okay, var missile uh, instance, equals enemy missile scene dot instance, beautiful, okay, and then launch position equals global position, yeah, this is going to work, so, um, yeah, okie doke, let's check it out. This should randomly shoot one, occasionally. Oh, except it's colliding with something? Maybe because it's off the screen? Um, oh, also we haven't set the collision shapes for this yet. So collision, what layer are we on? We are an enemy and uh, we only wanna collide with explosions? Yes, okay. Save, let's check this out. Yeah, shot me. Dope. Dope and dope dope. Okay. Um, okay, and then the other thing I want to do is um, muscle instance dot show behind parent equals true. Okay, and then that should be good. And now we can spawn the uh, enemies as well. So what I'll do is I'll say var. Uh, enemy underscore scene equals preload enemy scene. Grab that, stick that right there. Okay. Okay, and then I'll make a function for spawn enemy. So, yeah, function spawn underscore enemy. All right, and we're gonna say var enemy underscore ins equals enemy scene dot instance. Okay, then we're gonna say var. We'll say this. So if rand range zero to ten is greater than five point zero. Oh, then var, so I want to make it new, so var x, okay, then here we're going to say x equals, uh, negative zero, uh oh, this could be a problem, yeah, because I think what the problem is that, 
this is going to go off, this screen exited signal is going to go off when um, I spawn the enemy, if I spawn him outside the screen. So I'm going to say print. off screen. Okay, I'll save that. I don't know why it's giving me, probably because the main level is fudged up. Okay, so if rand range is greater than five, then we're gonna say x equals negative uh, 60. How long is this thing? Go to enemy. How long is the plane sprite? We can just go right here. This plane is 38. Yeah, so if we go 50, or even, honestly, if we go 40, we'd be fine. So, or half that to be technically correct. Okay, um, and then we say else x equals 480 plus 40, so that's 520. Okay, um, and then we say enemy instance uh, dot global position equals uh, vector two and then x for the x and then the y is going to be a rand range between some values I'm going to choose right now. So it looks like, I mean, I'm just going to kind of go for a guess from what I've seen somewhere between here and here. So somewhere probably between uh, 50 and 150. Yeah, I'll do 50 and 150. So rand range between, let's, yeah, let's do 50, and then let's actually make this 130, to be a little more fair. Don't want it to spawn too close to the ground because then they're just taking cheap shots, right? Um, okay, so this is the function for spawn enemy. Enemy instance dot global position equals vector two, blah, blah, blah. So this will spawn us right there. Uh, and then we need to go uh, add child enemy instance. And that should actually be it, because these guys are pretty self-contained. We just need to place them, and they'll start working. Oh, I'm not calling that function. <laughs> OK. And then here, say enemy, oh no, say spawn enemy. OK. That's obviously way too fast, also. <laughs> Okay, let's stick this down to 40. Also, is it just me or does it look freaking massive? I mean, I, I haven't made it so you can blow them up quite yet. This has taken a very long time. So I am actually going to just put this back to zero. Okay. Okay, so I, the other thing I actually think I want to do here is do var type. I'm just going to get rid of this. We're not assigning the type. So var type equals int rand range uh, uh, zero is it one it one to two okay and then I want to say print type okay let's run this one 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 why is it one, okay, if we do one to three, two, one, two, one, two. I don't, I don't know if I'm doing this correctly, but, oh yeah, because I think this only rounds down. So yeah, this is cool. Yeah, okay, so that should work. That should give us two. Okay, and we know that one's coming up, so this will actually work just fine. Okay, so into that, instead of rand i, because if you know, there's a rand i function which gives you a random int integer, but you have to like instantiate a random number generator, which is like, why not just use the built-in int function on a rand range? <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what I do there. And then we just check this out. 
Okay, and then this is basically setting which type of enemy it is. Um, and there's nothing different with, about them except for that. Right now they can't currently um, get hit and die. So it's enemy, uh, we want our explosion scene to interact with the enemy as well. I haven't set that up yet. So that way if it explodes it, it will hurt it. Um, is that what we care about though? Missile, okay, layer. Enemy here, I don't even think I've added this. Say on area entered, on area entered, okay. And the only thing that should be uh, entering this area here is something in whatever. So the explosion, the explosion is the only thing. <gasps> oh, okay. So, so we're gonna say if explosion so I want to do whoever I did this. So okay, go here, and then in the enemy, we're gonna paste a very similar thing. So I say if area dot get player explosion, if area dot player explosion. Uh, okay, then we're gonna say die. Okay, and then we'll say function die. Um, need to make the other variable var dead equals false. We'll say if not dead, dead equals true, and queue free. Okay, and that's just so that you can't accidentally call that twice. Um, I don't know. Okie doke, so that's cool. Um, I actually, I r just got something that I have to check on uh, on my email from somebody about this really big event that's coming up. So I am going to, let's see, is that still open? Yeah, I'm gonna leave you with some wonderful music and go check that. This should take me less than a minute, but uh, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Far away. Or flow state. We'll do. F no, we'll do flow state. back 
Sorry about that. Um, I got someone sent me a, a GIF of something. Apparently, everybody has figured this out already. So if you saw right here. We are uh, teasing something, uh, myself and, and lots of other YouTubers. And apparently most people have already figured out exactly what that says. I didn't think people would be able to figure out exactly what it says. But yeah, it's gonna be, I'm not gonna say what it is, just in case some people don't, but we're gonna be doing something pretty big for Godot, myself and a lot of other Godot programming creators, and uh, we're pretty excited about it. Today's the first day of teasing, and uh, there'll be more information to come for sure. Um, yeah, so stay tuned, I should say. Okay, so now, well now we can kill him, so let's see if we can kill him. Or not, maybe I can't kill him. Oh, but he shot at me, so that's good. That means that's working. Oh, 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 no, no, no. It's, it's a fun game, you know what I mean? Okay, so. Okay, so we're gonna say print. Area, okay. Oh, B. Okay, so clearly that's not working. So we are enemy and we mask with explosion. Okay. On enemy area entered. Area. I don't know why that's not working. Oh. Okay, well, that's interesting. Because it's an explosion, and it's this, right? So, okay. Say, print. Area dot play explosion. This might break the game real quick. Yeah, breaks the game. N okay, so it says there's no. Area dot get player explosion. It says there is no player explosion, but there must be because we're doing this and it's right there. And I also did this elsewhere. I did this right here. If area dot get player explosion of area dot, so that's super weird. Hmm. I think we can say print area dot. Oh, wait. How is this working then? It's not working. <laughs> That's funny. I just realized this isn't working. So we need to do um, area dot get underscore parent dot get that. Okay. Dot get underscore. Well, we can do this. Whatever. Parent. Okay. And yeah, so the reason is because the explosion scene is actually a sprite with an area attached to it. So we need to grab this and then check that if it's got those things. So I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Just paste right in place. Okay. And now let's say print hello, hello. Oopsies. There we go. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now I think those are supposed to be able to take two hits. So I might do that later on, we don't know. Yeah, oh, they figured out, okay, that makes me feel less bad that they figured out the other one. Here's Redefine Game Dev, one of the uh, leaders of the whole venture. And uh, everyone has figured out that teaser, unfortunately. <laughs> Yo, what's up, kind Russian man? <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, we, I'm making, whatchamacallit, but it makes me feel better that they've, they figured out the other one too. But so, um, we are making Missile Command, the classic game right here. 
And, uh, is it not? Why is this not making noise? It's weird. Should be. I'm assuming you guys can hear it. Nope, it's not capturing that either. Which is odd. Oh, that's why. Okay, cool. Okay, okie dokie. So now we've got these enemies. I might make them have two health. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna say var health, var. <laughs> var health equals two. Okay, and then that should probably go. I like to keep these relatively organized. We'll do something like this. Okay, and we'll say on blah, 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 blah. Okay, then we're gonna say health um, minus equals one. And then we're gonna say if health less than or equal to zero, then we die. That's all we're doing. So we're subtracting health, and then if the health is less than or equal to zero, die. Uh, now let's go ahead and see if that happens. Do I, I got rid of the print, okay, cool. Wow, that's cool. Okay, the other thing we need to do now is make the ships explode. Now, I don't know how big the explosions are. Let's find one here. Is it just one? Yeah, it's just they just do one explosion. Okay, so then we'll do the exact same thing we did here for the enemy missile. So enemy missile, we have the explosion scene right there. Go to enemy and uh, do it right here. Okay, then we'll go to enemy missile and die. We want this. Okay, and then we'll go to uh, enemy, and then die function, we're literally copy and pasting code, which is not stuff you should do, but it's whatever. Okay, Hello. cool, cool. In order to hit player explosion. Oh, we actually don't need to do this. That's okay. For you. That's for cherry sauce. So uh, we're making the instance, then we're gonna set that to our position, and then we're gonna add a child of it, okay. Yeah. Cool. I Very cool. I mean, we basically got a working little bit of asteroids here. Uh, now we just need to get into levels and an actual like gameplay loop, stuff like that. But we've gotten all the basic functionality. We're not even stopping it here, so maybe I just don't do this. It's very cute. But it shouldn't be able to shoot them off screen. Yeah. I like it. Whatever. We'll see if that becomes a problem. Probably won't be. Yeah. The red. It's a playable game. Wait a second. Where the hell's the spaceship now? Hmm. Well, that's not good, is it? Yeah. Why is there any function there to be body entered? I don't know. Enemy missile. Okay. Explosion. This is that. Okay. Nice. Ah, something's happening here with the enemy. I think it's colliding with itself. Enemy. No. Nope. That's not it. It must be doing what I thought it was going to do the first time, given that error. So we'll say, oh yeah, okay, we can just do this. So it's not printing off screen, but it's not there. Oh, he's, he's over here. Oh, I see. So it's spawning him on the right side now, which is not working because he doesn't know uh, doesn't know. We can just do that here. So I'm gonna do that in main level. And we're gonna say spawn enemy. 
okay. Um, then we'll say, actually we can just do run there. And then if we're on the right side, we'll say enemy instance dot uh, direct, oopsies, di direction equals vector two dot left, just like that. Okay. Now, yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. Oh God. Uh oh. Woo! All right, maybe that's asteroids. Okay, or not asteroids? It's not asteroids. It's just happening over here. Okay, we're going to cancel. Okay, I mean that's that's the basics of the asteroids gameplay loop. Now I guess we start making the HUD and levels. Um, yeah. Okay. So you get. 30 missiles per level. So that is going to be all handled in here. So now we can start kind of shrinking these guys up because they're um, just functions that just do a, a simple thing and we don't need to know that, okay? All right, so the spawn, spawn player missile, spawn enemy missile, spawn enemy, and of course we can just use these functions as other things happen in the game. Now we've made them and they work. Okay, so now what are the things that we need to do? I guess the first thing would be to actually make a, a limit on the number of missiles we have. So var um, missiles equals 30. Okay. Then physics process doo -doo 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 -doo. here, we're going to say if um, yeah, I'm sorry. So we're going to say if missiles yeah, if missiles uh, greater than or yeah greater than zero okay then we're going to do this okay and then we're gonna do say missiles minus equals one okay so if missiles is greater than or equal to zero, we can do this. So this will allow us to shoot 30 missiles. Uh, and then what I can say is like, else print no missiles. Now the other thing I need to do is clearly I have forgotten several print statements in my work. So I'm gonna clear those out real quick. There and then off screen, that's gonna be on enemy. There we go, okay. There might be more, but for right now we got that. Now I can only do 30 missiles. Yeah, so now we're out of missiles. So now what I need to do is reflect that on the bottom screen there. Um, if, you know, if we have missiles. And then if not, we need to add them. And so that comes into creating our HUD. So we've got a HUD control. We've got this HBox container with all of these uh, texture recs here. Okay. Um, and then, so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab this one. Okay. And we're going to save branch as scene. Okay. Scenes, HUD control. And then this is going to be missile uh, display. Text direct, okay. Um, so then what we're gonna be doing here is actually uh, adding these via code. So on the HUD control, we're gonna add a script here. Nope, I built that bed. Um, okay, so we're gonna say var, actually. Let's go here. So we're gonna say var um, okay missile display equals pre preload and then we'll click and drag that in there. Okay. Boom, 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 boom,
And so essentially what we're going to do is we just have these and we're just going to be adding them dialogue. No, I actually made my own uh, dialogue plugin recently. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll show you real quick. Um, so I made my own dialogue plugin. Where is it? Godot code. I'm making a game called Mecha. I don't know if you watched me make, oh no, that's my music, Godot project files. Okay, so basically the way mine works, and I, I probably should just use Dialogic, but this way it's very tailored to me, and I know that uh, how the system works, and I can build anything crazy if I so choose. It's lagging quite a bit right now. I have no idea why. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so um, if I go into my scripts here, there should be one called Dialog. I don't see it. Maybe just because I'm stupid. Yeah, let's just search it. Okay. Dialog. Dialog.gd. So this is just a, 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 well, actually, it should be a class. I'll need to fix that. But uh, it's a global with a dictionary uh, called just dialog, right? This is all the dialog in the game currently. Um, oh, and then this was actually just something I was using while I was creating the uh, plugin. So literally all this is, it's a constant and it's a dictionary that has all the dialogue in the game. Um, and then so if I want to add something to this, uh, then I would just come and, and add that dialogue here, right? And so as, as we go, when I'm not working on dialogue anymore, I can shrink it like that and it actually becomes pretty manageable, right? Uh, now what we do here is go into any scene that I have. So for instance, where is he? Father is one scene. Uh, and we go to this animated skeleton, and you can see that my the plugin I made actually makes a, a dialogue option here. So this is a preview of whatever dialogue you select. So I can select Father 2, and it previews that mechanism, blah, have its AI focus reset, blah, 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 Father 1, and then it's this. Um, and it's pretty cool. And so if I come over here, check this out. Oh, I don't know why it's lagging so much. I think it's because I've got a bunch of programs open. So, I mean, it works. And uh, I made it, and I'm happy about it. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's my plugin. I'm actually going to be making a video on how to make your own plugins. I should be uploading that uh, either, yeah, probably tomorrow. I'm going to try and get it out by tomorrow, even though, oh, I've got so much stuff to do tomorrow, but we'll see. I, I, I've already recorded it and half edited it. I just need to do the voiceover and then kind of smooth out the transitions and whatnot. But, yeah. Okay. So, we've got bar missile display equals this um, and then so I'm gonna make a function function and then we say add um, display underscore missile okay we do this and then we're gonna say missile underscore ins equals missile display dot instance Okay, and then we want to do on ready bar. On ready bar, uh, do, 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 do. missile uh, container equals hbox container, just like that. Okay, actually, I should probably rename this. So we'll say missile hbox container. And then here, I'll just change this to uh, missile ace box container. Okay, just like that. Why isn't it like this? Oh, bar. Okay, um, missile instance equals missile display dot instance. Okay, now what we're gonna say is, I think it's literally just missile container dot add child missile container or missile instance okay that's it yeah that's that's literally it um, so that's this function that's all that does um, and then we're going to need to have I think that's easy enough where I don't even need to make a, a function for that um, so we're gonna say function reload well 
Let's see. So what's going to happen is from the main level, we're going to go ahead and, and basically tell the HUD control. We're going to emit a signal here. And we're going to tell the HUD control that, OK, the you know, we've used the missile or that there's a new level. Um, so let's actually just do those right now. Okay, so I'm gonna make two signals. We're gonna say signal um, missile underscore launched. Okay, and we're also gonna say sig no new underscore level new level and we actually don't even need to do that for either of these okay and then right now i'm not going to be using this one for quite a while but we are going to do uh, missile launched so we got ready blah 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 and every time we do this we're going to say emit signal missile launched okay uh, and the new level we're not going to do i guess we'll do that right mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so HUD control. Yeah, so what we want to do is go right here, and then we're going to go, should do that, should let us do it. Missile launched, and then we're going to go to HUD control, just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing for that one. Okay, even though we're not actually doing anything with it right now. So on main level missile launched, Okay, we're going to say, we should actually keep track of the missiles here. So we'll say missiles, var missiles equals 30. And then, yeah, so I'll do this. Function, add display missile. Um, this should actually probably be at the very bottom. Let's do this. Okay. And then I'm going to say function ready. Okay, function ready. What I'm going to do there, we're going to say I actually think I'm just going to call this function, just like that. Uh, and then in this one, we're going to say if missile container dot get underscore children get children. Yeah, there we go. Um, then we're going to say for child. Child in, or we'll say for missile in missile container dot get underscore children. So get children if you don't know. Um, dude, hell yeah, I'm so excited that people actually want to know. It's actually a lot easier than you'd think, especially for stuff like that. So I'm, I'm psyched because you, Ranja, and one other guy were like, oh, yeah, that'd be really cool. I thought it would kind of be like nowhere. And the docs do not explain it very well. It was a headache learning the first time. But then after, I'm like, this is not that bad. And my second plugin I made in less than an hour. The dialogue plugin you saw right there, I made that in less than an hour. But the hard part was figuring out. I was like, I wanted to do JSONs for no reason. <laughs> Stuff like that. Anyway, but yeah, so I'm excited that you're excited. <laughs> so for missile in missilecontainer.getchildren, uh, so this returns a list of uh, references to all the children. Now we're going to do something for each one of those. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is clear all of those. Okay. And we are going to say, oh, but this is, uh... whatever. Okay. So for missile in missile container dot get children, we're going to say, uh, missile dot q free why is that not letting me <sighs> okay q free <laughs> I don't know why it's not doing that for me and I don't know how to spell q <laughs> like I always forget how to spell q okay so missile dot q free 
So if there is children, kill all those children, right? Essentially what that's saying. Um, and then after that, uh, what we're going to say is miss all container. Or no, we want to say for missile in range range zero to thirty. Yep. We want to say add display missile. Add display missile. Okay. And then on missile launched, what we're gonna say actually we don't need to keep track of these, do we? Yeah, we don't at all. Okay. And then what we're gonna say right here is we're gonna say missile container. Um, dot get underscore children okay and then we're going to grab negative one and grab the last one so we're gonna say oh yeah I'm gonna say dot Q wait do I still have it when okay so on main level missile launched blah 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 okay so let's see if this works so we have 30 missiles So you can see that currently they go down like that, which is cool. So you can see that very obvious graphical display at the bottom of your screen. Let's see here though. So there's clearly, they're a little bit too big. So what I'll do here is now we can just go into the scene here and we can go right here and we can go to rect min size and Oh, that's a problem. Let's try, what if we do, um, that's too small though. Okay, I don't know if it'll let me do partials here. We go 12 divided by mm, 5, 2.4. So we want uh, 12 minus 2.4 minus 2.4 okay and then here oh it will okay and then here we want the min size to be 21 minus 21 divided by 5.0 16.8 really why is that why does that trip me out well okay then if we do size okay yeah so that looks good and now if we run this yeah, now we can see all our missiles right there. Hell yeah, we we got a game, folks. Oh yeah, we also definitely have to make the cities. Totally forgot about the cities. Um, but we've got, I mean, the fun part is that we've got shooting, we've got uh, a limited number of missiles per round and stuff like that. And we can now lose those missiles. Let's go to debugger, see what the heck is going on. Okay, so yeah, for this we want to do that. Do that as well. And finally, that's actually, unfortunately, we kind of just have to deal with that for right now. Um, yeah, so that was the basics of what I'm going to do with the HUD. But I guess we should make the cities real quick. So, um... But I don't know, man. I feel like I'll, I'm going to get the cities done, and then I think I'm going to do the rest tomorrow because I'm pretty exhausted. Um, no, yeah, I think I think coding is very fun. I, I like that's when people are like, oh yeah, why don't you use the visual scripting? And I want to be like, bro, it's like half the fun is the like solving these problems and and coding and stuff. That's why I like it. You know what I mean? It's like a it's a big puzzle. Um, but okay, so this will work. Is this all works? So now we need to make the city. So I'm going to add a static body 2D. Oopsies. Static body 2D. To this, we're going to add a collision shape 2D. Uh, and then we're also going to add a sprite 2D. Oh. So what I didn't do, but... Um, 
is absolutely in the actual game is that when your cities get hit, let's see if he's getting, if he lose any cities here. There's one. They actually just turn into the same color as the regolith or whatever you're landing on. So I that's actually pretty easy to do and I think I'm going to do that because that's not, like I said, very difficult to do. Uh, all we'll do is we'll make a um, cutout of the one and then just make it the same color and then when it gets hit, it just changes the color to that. There you go. Um, okay, anyway, so we'll do that. <sighs> I hate when that happens. I'm trying to do Command A to select that. Select everything there. So go to cities here. Snag that one. There's our city. Okay. And then we're going to do, I'm going to come up here, collision, layer. We are a city and we can collide with explosions. And that's it. Oh no, enemy missiles. That's what we want to collide with. No. Uh, yeah, we'll do both. Okay, cool. And then we'll make this. Transform, no, 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 no. We want to add a new shape. I'm going to add a typical shape. And we're going to do, oopsies. Thing like this. Little thing like that. Okay. And there we go. And now it has to like, like really land on the city for it to hit the city, um, which is great. I don't know, we'll, so we'll see. We'll see if I want the explosions to actually affect the city or they, the missiles actually have to hit the city. We'll see, we will see. Okay, so cool. And then because I have OCD, I'm gonna fix these because I don't like them to be non-whole numbers. <laughs> okay. Okay, so enemies, now we're gonna go back up. So this is in main level, create folder, and we're gonna call this one city, just like that. And of course, we'll call this city scene. Okay. Got that, got that. And now we just, of course, need to add a script. I mean, this is basically it though. Oh, we do need to add an area. Now it's making me think I should have just made this whole thing an area, but whatever. Area 2D, add a collision shape to that. Yeah, actually, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to change type area 2D, and then we're going to need to fix this to area 2D. Like that, and I'm just going to change this area 2D like that. Very, very cool, very, very cool. Love it. Love it, I love it, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> okay, Air 2D, Collision Shape 2D, Sprite. Why, what am I doing here? Triggering my brain. It, I'm running on empty here. It, it's starting to hit, hit hard for me, but I want to finish this. Okay, so uh, again, we've got collisions and we're masking. So we're on the layer city, blah, blah, blah. Um, 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 um. And I want to connect the area entered signal. Okay, and then on area 2D area entered, uh, we are going to say die. Okay, and then function die. Okay, and then we're going to say Q free. And then here we say var dead equals false say if not dead then uh, dead equals true and keep it okay cool cool uh, so now I think we should actually have it where you can shoot those so we go here and then we add um, City, okay. And go ahead and drag that like somewhere like here, right? For instance, uh, and then yeah, so you can destroy them. Um, oh shit! Oh, I got it. Okay, nice. <laughs> I'm gonna give somebody a freaking stroke, man. But okay, so that, that worked. 
And that's, I mean, you know, I think real quick that I will do that. Okay, so I'm gonna open up Affinity Designer and just make the outline shell for one of those guys. So I'm gonna go file, maybe it's here, where is that, there we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this one visible, click this, do this, and then angular to page, we've got 30 by 14, 30 by 14. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do here is um, make a copy of this, the city, it's gonna be city, city outline. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and rasterize this layer together. Um, and I wonder if it'll let me do something like this. Can you do that? Nope. Jeez. Okay. Um, bum 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 bum. I don't think I can. Because I think if I do this, it's, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, th this tool sucks. On, it's one of my, my only, like, oh, well, that's kind of working. Am I not holding shift down? All right, well, that worked, okay. Um, and then, okay, and then what I would like to do, see, this is something I, I used to be able to do very, very simply on Photoshop, but I can't do as easily on this one. Edit, I'll do edit fill. Can I do this? Oh, any color? Well, that works. I didn't. <laughs> it's called a paint bucket tool, you fool. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and now save that. It's probably gonna be some weird place. No, that's actually correct. Okay, AFD assets. We're gonna save this as city uh, underscore outline. Okay, go ahead and quit. AFD assets has been modified. Oh, actually, yeah, we'll save that. Okay, cool. And then there it is right there. So we'll go into the city group and we're gonna make it so that when it dies, um, we, you know, I guess I guess what we'll do is just do, so there should, there's something called disabled. We can disable ourselves, right? Or no, we can this, yeah, so disabled. So on die, what we're actually gonna do is not cube free, but we're going to do, um, Closing shape dot disabled it's false. I mean, sorry, true. We want it disabled, uh, and then we're also going to do sprite sprite dot texture uh, equals load and city outline. Okay, cool. And now I should be able to do something like this. Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm stupid though, eh? Did you know that? Because it doesn't need to be white. It needs to be. Oh god. It needs to be this color. That's the color. We'll go here. Pocket tool. There we go. Okay. Now. Do -do -do -do. Okay, save, replace, reemplazar. Uh, yeah, we'll save. Okay. Oh, cool. And now this works. Look at that! It's so cool. Okay. <laughs> and that's the game, folks. Let's let's see though. Maybe I should do more than one city. It looks like something's gonna hit that one, right? That's a lot of missiles. Yep, perfect. That worked just like how I wanted it to work. Oh, you know what I also just realized though? Is that we can actually kind of fix this by just changing the separation. 
which is nice. So, um, 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 um. oh, there we go. Okay, so we change this to ten. I think it would be easier if I just did this. So, missile display, and then. Okay, cool. And then so now we can just mess with the separation. Um, here, got some constants. Right there. That's actually great. And then what I'll do is mess with the margins here. I want the left to come in just a tad. And then we'll take the top in just a tad there. And I think that looks pretty good. And now I can just grab all these guys and delete them. Nice. That's a game there. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Check it out. My humps, my humps, my humps, my humps, my humps, my lovely lady love. Check it out. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that's almost everything. One more thing we need to do, actually. <sighs> and then, and then I think I'm gonna be done for today. And that is to make the bomb. So, a lot of ways you could do this. I don't know how exactly the bombs work. Oh, they're smart. That's the thing. It's pretty hard to get the bombs. They go right for cities too, apparently. into its own guy there? Oh no, that's cool. I think this is where he loses. I just lost twice in a row. That's crazy though. Okay, so they can dodge bullets. I don't know if I... <laughs> uh, I guess that's actually not that hard to do. Um, you make them don't... You, they don't dodge the missiles. They only dodge the explosions. And they heat seek essentially for one of them. So I, I'm going to make one. Let's just do it. Right. So then I'm going to add... What is happening? What well, is happening? There we go, okay. Area 2D. So again, this is just gonna be an Area 2D with a collision shape, okay. On this also is going to be a sprite, uh, but in fact there's going to be, oh, yeah. yeah, this is actually gonna be two sprites. So it's gonna be lights, okay. Um, Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, and I'm gonna add an animation player. Animation player. And I did it all for you. Okay. Bomb. We'll do this. What? There we go. Okay. So we've got this one. I'm gonna, can't do it that way. 
gonna drop that right here on that one, just like this. Okay. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, animation. Oh, hopefully, I made these the same. Well, we can just do region if I didn't. But so this should be. Yeah, it's not gonna work. So, but that's okay. So now we can do something called the region, which is important to learn too. So that's good. So enabled, and we'll enable that for both these guys. Enabled on. Ah, but that could be a problem. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I forgive myself. Okay, so sprite here, we can go to the texture region. Whoa, what the hell? Let's make it very difficult to not let me zoom in anymore. Okie doke. Sorry, I just totally nailed my mic. Wait, what? What is happening? That's very interesting. Okay, well anyway, I know that I want the, so this is the position that it starts at is zero, zero. Um, and then it's one, two, three, four, five. So we should be able to go five by five here. Let me get something good like that. Okay. And then we'll call this body. And then in lights, we're also going to this, we're going to set the X to five here, and then um, the width, if we do five by five there. Yeah, it's not going to work. That's not going to work. So this should actually be six. And then this should be two, or sorry, one. Yep, and then this needs to be three by three. Perfect, okay, there we go. So I've got that, we've got the lights here. You can just barely see that it's not perfect, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command Save. We're gonna go back up, go to, I guess we can put that in missiles, okay? I'm gonna call this, um, what do they call it? Actually, I would love to be smart bombs. Let's call this a smart bomb scene. Okay. Ooh, what's in the debugger? Dot set underscore deferred disabled true. Okay. Oof, oof. Okay, so we're on smart bomb. Call this smart bomb. Okay, collision shape here. We're gonna make this a circle shape. And we're gonna make this just a little bit bigger than the bomb itself. Okay, and then I need to, well, actually, I don't think we need to. So we want this to be on the enemy missile layer and, and it's gonna behave on, on those terms exactly like that. Uh, and we want it to mask with explosions, cities, and land. Um, I don't think enemies, though. I think we want it to go right past enemies. So the idea here in the animation player, so we'll make an, a new animation, and this is going to be, just call it normal, I don't really care. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, sure, we'll make it in, um, uh, do we need it to be a full side game? Uh, yeah, whatever, we'll see. Okay, so we'll keep it like that. The first one we're gonna do, the body's gonna be the same every time. Then what we're going to do here is on lights, we're going to go visibility, and we're gonna toggle this off. I don't know why we're not in the animation here. Do this, create, okay. And then for doing one second, we want half on, half off, right? So here, I won't do this, on. Okay, tag that, and then we can click this loop. Also click this to make sure it runs. Uh, and then what we'll do to get the rest of the animation working, it, oh God, it would work. It'd be so great if I could do this from the animation player, but I cannot. In fact, I might not even want to do this from the animation player. 
I do, I am actually interested to try something out that I've seen. So I'm gonna get rid of the animation player. I'm gonna add a script. We're also gonna add a timer node. Okay, I'm gonna set this to be uh, 0.5 seconds. Idle, auto start, and then we're just gonna do timer timeout like that. Okay, I'm gonna make a new variable. Bar, lights, underscore, visible. Okay, we're gonna say equals true. Well, here we'll make it false by default. Okay, then we'll say lights visible equals not lights visible. Um, say print lights visible. Okay. Fuck yeah. Okay, so that's lit. So I, I've never done that before, but I saw somebody do that. I'm like, that'd be epic because I've written some very complex functions to do that. Basically toggle it on and off like that, which is cool. Uh, and then we're going to say lights visible. I oh, know. Lights dot visible. Visible equals false. Oh, no. Equals lights visible. Okay. And then we should, I uh, can't see it really. Oh, it, it, it'll be working though. And that's basically what we, they, they've got going on here with it. Oh, it's actually happening much faster than that. So we can set this to be, well, here, let's check it out in the earlier game. Tell me if this is too loud, by the way, guys. So I think it could probably be half that, whatever the speed was. So yeah, 0.5, like this is 0.25. Okay, now the other thing you can see happening is that we're actually toggling or going through the um, physics process. Um, actually, we'll make this, uh, yeah, we'll keep it physics process. Uh, and then we're going to say lights, we should do this. Lights equals lights, okay. Oh, in fact, we don't even need this. I just realized. Yeah, we don't even need this variable here because we can literally just do this. And then we just do this. That should work just the same. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, now what we'll do in physics process here is we'll say lights dot modulate equals modulate dot h plus equals uh, point. Let's do oh five maybe. One. No, not zero point five. Zero point one. It's hard to tell from here. I'm gonna go ahead and move it here. Ah, that's also because the lights. So we're gonna say. Funk. Ready. Then we'll say. Lights dot. Modulate. Uh, equals color one zero zero one 
like that. Now we should see something. Or do I just not even need to do this whole thing? I mean, I thought that was happening, but maybe that's not happening. Um, what if we just did this? It's good to me. We could even make it a little more aggressive and just do this. Fine by me? Okay, cool, cool. Um, so now, We want this thing to kind of figure out the city. So I want, I'm interested, I really want to look at one. There's a few that hit cities over here. It, yeah, it definitely knows where it's going the whole time. But okay, so here's the other good thing, is that we're not going to change the position of the cities. So, we can actually just make those like constants that don't change. So, is this supposed to be a city? This should be called city. Okay, there we go. Save that. Is it reflected? No, it's not. We'll just get rid of this here. Okay. Uh, I am going to add uh, a node 2D here, and then to this, I'm going to add. Cities. So you get one, you get six cities. I did just realize that this should not be there. That's fine though. So we'll just put this like right there. <laughs> Whoops. All right. I don't think that one should be either. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Okay, file, open, recent. Okay, so what we need to do is grab... Oh, what the... Yeah, perfect. Okay, so what is the size of this one? This is land. Okay, let's do this. Come from... So that's 480 by 24. Four, just like that. Okay, so we want that to be that big. And then now we're going to need to fix this up. So that's in pixel. We go to this tool, command, and then we'll kind of like do our own thing here. That should be good. That looks good to me. Well, let's do this. Because clearly the uh, one I copied this from was not doing too hot in their game. Yeah, that should definitely not be there as well. That's, yep. Yeah. But I will do a little thing like this. Oops, nope, that's not what I want to do. Control, just like that. It'd be cool if you could. Okay, and then does not look super uh, rounded to me, so I'm gonna try and do a little bit of rounding. That looks good, and that looks good. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and export this. Same file as land. Okay, save, reemplazar. Quit, save. Then Godot, it has not loaded those changes yet. Who knows why? Just 
uh, an occasional thing that happens. Okay, so we'll go right back over here. Where is it? Go missile command dot. Go missile commando. Okay, and go to. This should definitely be colored by a kind. Okay, images, and then. Where is it? Where's land? Where's land? Let's see. There we go. Okay, cool. So now everything has gotten where it's supposed to go. We can add our cities here. So add one bad boy right there, right? Okay, uh, and then we can duplicate that. Let's see where are we putting these guys? So three in between these hills, right there. Duplicate that one. Put one right there. Okay. Right there. Duplicate one on top of the mound here. Okay. Duplicate, and then finally. Our last one in this little gully there. Okay. And there you go. Now, if we play this, uh, we can see what happens. Uh oh, he's not going the right way. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Well, that's that's good that I saw that now. I'm going to quickly fix that. Um, 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 um. Okay. So, ready. Okay. We say if if direction equals equals vector two um, dot left then sprite dot scale dot x is negative one. Okay. All right. So now we should see. So as he's hit these cities here. Yep. Yeah, and now it's a barren wasteland. Cool. That's weird. I don't know why it's lagging when I click, but uh, it is. Anyway, those are stuff to figure out for another day, I think, because that's, I mean, that's, oh, I got, I got fuck. We gotta finish the smart bomb. Oh. Okay, put it back, put it back. Okay, so, uh, oh yes. So now what we can do here is go to main level, cities, uh, and then what I'm gonna do to make my life easier <laughs> is just do uh, on ready for x, for x in no 2 d dot get underscore children. Uh, we're going to say bar list equals this list dot append x dot global position. Okay, and then we'll say print list. And we'll run this. Now I've got a list of all the positions that those guys uh, currently inhabit, which is cool. I guess actually what we should do quickly is go through here in the transform and make these. And this is not just because OCD, because when you're dealing with pixel art, it helps to 
have these all in, in perfect coordinates. Transform 132 and 237, okay, 289 and 237, let's form uh, 337 and 232, okay, let's form uh, That's all looking good. Okay, cool. And now we'll just do the same thing again. And now we've got this. So this is a list of all the places that the bomb can attack, which is cool. And now I'm just, I'm literally, that's the only reason I did this and I'm gonna delete this right now. <laughs> Cause now if we go to Spark Bomb, we'll say um, constant uh, targets equals this. And it's literally just a list. Ah, I see. Actually, there was something else I should have done. So let's do this. This will make my life a lot easier as well. So I'm gonna undo doing that. Um, back, oh no, I want it to say. Nah, I could have already been done with this. Okay, so we're gonna go to Smart Bomb and then we'll have to Oopsies, cancel. Have to do here is do that, and then we'll write vector two, okay. And then I'm just literally going to paste that because that's the fast. That's actually faster than coding it. Okay, and then typically when you do stuff like this, the way you're supposed to do it is like this. Okay, cool. So there's our targets. Um, they should be caps, targets. Okay, so these are all the locations where cities lie and, and we're going to want to move towards those. So Smart Bomb, we've got this. This is for our lights, of course. Um, we want to fall down towards the Earth. So we're say global position uh, plus equals So go position dot y plus equals vector two dot down, okay? Down times what is the speed of these ones? What is the enemy missile speed? 25. So we'll make this 20. Um, here, we'll do this. So var fall speed underscore speed equals 20. Might make that slower. We'll see. Times delta. Okay. So now these will fall straight down. Now we need to do... Um, Global position dot x oh so on ready we're gonna say um, we'll make a var target so var target uh, and then we say uh, on ready we're gonna say actually we can do this uh, on ready var target right uh, and then we say on ready var target equals um, Oh, you can't do a random, I forgot about that actually. This is gonna be var target. Um, in Python, you can just do list.random choice or choice, right? Uh, but you can't do that for some reason in um, this. So what you need to do is do something like this. Say target, target equals 
Um, targets dot and then not do but this and then we say int rand range zero two uh, targets dot length I think it's dot length to here um, Dun, 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 max invert pop back push front remove size size I think it's just size I think this is returns the number of elements in the array so that's what it is I think it's length in Python but uh, and here it is size okay cool um, oh no because we want the smallest to be one biggest to be that okay cool 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 so it's randomly going to select target from this list we're also going to randomize that don't forget to do that because um, there is no true random in games basically what randomize does is it picks a random like seed number based upon the time down to milliseconds uh, when this function is called so it takes the time in milliseconds and uses that to uh, as a seed essentially to make random numbers which is pretty great because unless you play something at the exact same millisecond twice in a row you're never going to get the exact same numbers which is good um yeah so place.modulate equals that we're gonna set that okay target we're setting our target and then so our global position dot x can be plus i think we want to move towards so plus equals and then so we're gonna say um, global position dot direction to um, target dot global underscore position wait oh no we can just say target because this is already just a, a global position so so this is going to be global position dot x plus equals this. So this is a vector, um, and I'll say dot x here. Okay, uh, and then we need our x speed, bar uh, horizontal. Mm, let's just see this. Let's do times. Fall speed times delta should be fall speed as well. Okay, and then what I want to do is uh, in here make okay function spawn enemy missile. Yeah, so we're, this is actually be a little bit different, but not tremendously different. We're gonna make a function. this okay so function spawn underscore enemy underscore bomb smart bomb okay we're gonna paste this we're gonna do this enemy for enemy underscore smart bomb underscore scene equals preload okay and then we're gonna do actually that's fine it's right there okay cool cool uh, and then we're gonna say change this oh we don't do that though so bomb underscore ins Don't want that any longer. We'll do that. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to change this to enemy bomb scene. Oh, fuck me. This should be this. <laughs> A lot of things wrong with this, actually. 
Let's make that. Oh, god damn it, you're right. Okay, it's fine. Toy song. Okay, cool. Um, so that's it. Launch position equals this. We actually don't need that anymore. Because literally all we're doing is dropping them uh, for my random thing like that. Okay. And then now we just need to call that a few times. So I'm going to say spawn enemy smart bomb. Right now it's not smart, but I think I'm going to make it. Ah, I should make it smart today because then all I have to do is the level editing tomorrow. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh. Invalid operands float in vector two and operand. Where do you see that, friend? Am I tripping? I don't see that anywhere. 28. We're adding vector two times false three times delta. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is just going to be false dot delta. Okay. Let's try it. They don't have quite the same ring to them, I'll say. Oh, but you see, they missed, which is funny. Oh, for one thing, they also <laughs> they also didn't explode. <laughs> Haven't even set that up yet. That's okay. Um, so we'll do. Oh yeah, so we don't need this any longer. Okay, and then right here we're going to do on area entered, and then we're also going to do uh, body entered. Okay, just like that. Cool, 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 cool. And then we're going to say die, die, and then function die. Okay, and then we need to make another one. Bar dead is false. If not dead, dead equals true. Okay, and then we're going to go. Here and we're gonna say var explosion underscore T S E N. Uh, equals pre well here let's, let's just do this. Um, 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 um. Enemy missile. Okay. Uh, then we'll go to enemy missile and we'll go to this. Okay. Oh, and then we'll do this as well. Smart bomb. Okay. A little bit of that. Oh, we actually do want that. So go to enemy missile. Ah, enemy missile. Okay. Okay, we'll do smart bomb. Smart bomb area entered. So then we're gonna just make this variable var is false by default. Okay, yep. So, yeah, that's all gonna be working just great here, isn't it? Oof. Oof, 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 oof. Okay, um, and now I think that this should all work. Let's see. Hell yeah, okay, and there we go. I mean, everything's working. The thing is we need them to be smart bombs now. Okay, which I don't think will be too hard. So this is actually cool because it allow me to teach how to make a state machine 
which is a, a pretty simple thing that I feel like a lot of people actually don't know. So we've got ready, physics process, this, this, this. That's all looking good. Um, so we are going to do, well, it should be here, yeah. Enum, oh, I forgot how you write it. Yeah, I forgot how you write enum. <laughs> okay, Godot, why is that happening? Why are you doing that, huh? Why are you doing that? It's opening up on the on the wrong thing here. So we'll say Godot enum. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I just want to see red right enum. Okay, perfect. Oh, so you can actually do that. Okay, cool. So I want to do enum state. Right, is this how this works? Enums. Okay, cool. This is literally exactly what I'm doing right here. Okay. So enum state, uh, and then we're gonna say, uh, so the states are gonna be falling, uh, and then dodging, like that. Okay. And then we're gonna say match match state okay and we'll say oh this be state we'll say falling and then this should be right there okay oh this needs to be one more okay and then we'll say why is that oh does this need to be one more Falling isn't declared. This is right there. What you mean? How is it? I'm very confused here. Okay. Is there the keys in a named enum are not registered as global constants. They should be accessed prefixed by the enum's name, name.key. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Match state. State dot. State dot. Falling. Okay. There we go. Okay, cool. State dot falling. Um, state dot. Uh, dodging. Okay, and right now I'm gonna hit pass, which yeah, should be that. Okay, and then we need to essentially code two things. One is telling it to enter into the state where, into the dodging state, which means uh, we're gonna start dodging the bullets. Um, and then, yeah, and then we'll code that behavior. But also, yeah, so the two things are one, the thing that puts us into the state, and two, the actual behavior once we're in that state. Um, Yeah, I sure hope it does. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So what we're going to do is add another area 2D here. And then this one's going to be called our detection. Explosion detection area. Okay, got a collision shape there. And what we're going to do is make which is going to be just another circle shape, uh, and we'll make it, that's probably good, I would say. Like, yeah, I don't think we want it any bigger than that, okay? Um, and then we're going to cat, doo -doo -doo -doo, area entered, okay. Okay, just like this, pass real quick. Um, and then here, the only thing it can, explosion, and we are uh, actually, nothing. It's not monitorable. Just the layer. So 
monitorable. We're going to turn that off monitoring because it's only looking. It's masking with explosions. If something is exploding, it's going to trigger this function right here. Uh, or there is explosion in this detection area. Uh, and then we'll say, um, state Can I do this? Let's see, does it tell me? State equals, can I do dodging? Is it gonna get mad at me for this? Let's see, I might need to do this differently. Can assign value to a constant. Okay, so what we're gonna do is do var state equals oh, we do this I oh, know we'll do it there so we'll say var state equals um, falling and we'll just get rid of this cool okay so match state There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Match state. Then we come down here. State. Okay. State equals dodging. Okay. Um, that's what happens whenever something is in that area. We're going to constantly say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now. Um, and we're gonna do what's our behavior dodging uh, we're gonna say so yeah so we need to make a new thing here so this is going to be var um, detected underscore explosion okay uh, and this is going to be, we're not going to define it right now. So let me just do this. Stick it up there. There. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, area. So we're going to say detected explosion equals area dot global position. Okay. Just like that. So now the detected explosion, we're going to get that. This is going to be the uh, global position of wherever the explosion that we're getting is, right? So we want the bomb to now avoid that explosion. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, global position plus equals um, global position dot direction to uh, do, 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 detected explosion times ball speed times delta. Okay. But now there's no way for after it's done to get back into it. So what we also want to do here uh, is then check. Right. So we want to say that whatever our radius is here so we'll get this so you can see that we can have this shape that radius so we'll get that we can get that value this is a little complicated but it's not tremendously complicated um, and then so what we'll do is we'll say another on ready var so on ready var um, detection underscore radius radios radius equals Collision shape 2D uh, dot shape dot radius dot shape. I think that should work. Uh, shape dot radius. Okay. Um, let's see if this what happens here. Okay. And then if I do print detection. 
section radius. Perfect. Okay. Wait, that's weird though because well, that's yep, that's not right. <laughs> that's not right. Where the heck are you getting whore from? 4.0 what? Oopsies. Yeah, that's... Oh, I know. <laughs> Silly me. Okay. So this is... This needs to be... No, let's go to the wrong one. Okay, we need to go to... There we go. Okay, so we need to make sure we're getting this collision shape, just like that, a shaped out radius. Okay, but now we know that that will work. We're not printing anything. Um, we're gonna say, uh, if, yeah, so we're gonna say if global position dot distance to, um, bah, 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 bah. detected, detected explosion is, uh, greater than Detection radius, okay. Detection, detection radius. If it is greater than detection radius, um, like that, then we're gonna say state equals falling. So essentially, if we're gonna move, this is gonna have us move in the opposite direction of the explosion, right? Um, and then this is checking, if we're far enough away from that explosion, then just keep falling like normal. And you can easily be put in a situation where we should actually probably have this detection radius be like this um, plus like five, let's do like three, okay? Just give us a little bit of bounding room, right? So this will make sure that we are, it's no longer in our detection area. Or you know what we could also do? Yeah, I'm actually gonna do that instead because this is a little bit too complex, especially for beginners. This is fine. But then what I want to do here is rather than have to do something like this, okay, I don't, am I using detection radius anywhere? No, then what we'll do is we'll do the same thing here. We'll do this and we'll say on area exited, okay. Uh, then we're gonna say uh, state equals falling, just like that. Ooh, pain in my neck, pain in my neck, pain, pain in my neck, pain in my neck, pain. Explosion. Cool. Okay, let's give that a shot. I think they're trying, but they just can't move away fast enough. I don't know. Oh wait, it's moving towards it. <laughs> oh hey Bean Bean. Oh hey Bean Bean. Oh hi. Hey. Come say hi to Dad. Uh. Okay, we're so close, so close. So this is actually telling us to go towards the explosion right now, right? Go position. Um, so we, I think all we literally have to do is put a negative here. Oh, or we could just do this. Detected explosion towards global position. Sorry. Oh, it still hit it though. That's pretty good. That's pretty. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. It might be too good. <laughs> Whoa, how did that even happen, dude? So it looks like you can get them, but it's a little challenging. Like, you're gonna literally get them. I think that's actually like how it's supposed to be, though. 
which is interesting. But that's cool. Okay. And there we go. So most, I think that's most, if not all, of the game mechanics. Uh, there is one more that I think I need to do. Um, and that is that I think that it's, it's a little unfair that it's random, basically, which way you're shooting. Um, here, let's just spawn one of these for right now. Spawn any smart ball. Okay, cool. So, right now, spawn flare missile. So right now we're picking a random location. But what we actually want to do is based upon our global mouse position. So we're going to say if get underscore global mouse position. And then we just want to get the x is greater than um, what's, oh, it's 480 divided by 2. So that's 240. So if it's greater than 240.0, if get global mouse position, uh, we're going to use mouse position 2. We'll just change this to less than, make that correct. So if our global mouse position is basically on the left half of the screen, we're going to shoot from the left position, else we're going to do that. And so now you should be able to see that this will shoot from here, and then these will shoot from here, which is good, I think. So it might actually be easy enough for us to actually just do it like that. Right now you can blow up your own buildings, I guess like, I wonder if you can do that in the, I feel like I need to play Missile Command real quick. And then I think this is gonna be um, Missile Command play, play Missile Command. At AARP? Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> Abigail, AARP offers the, for people to be able to play Missile Command. Play what? This game that came out in the 1980s. Isn't that funny? You don't think that's funny? I think she's pretty annoying. Oh, this looks like shit. I don't want to play that. <laughs> I don't. I want to play the original. Play Missile Command. Original. Oh. Uh. Can I play any of these games anymore? Uh oh. Okay. Well, here. What if I do Safari? Okay, so that's not going to work either. Simply so navigate to the web version with host a flash player you want to play. Open the flash player extension. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Thank you very much. Hopefully, this isn't some big uh, thing. It's going to destroy me. I should be able to go right here. Oh no, please work. No. What's battle zone? Oh, so none of these are gonna work. Oh, Gravatar. That's the I'd love to play that game. <laughs> none of these work. Okay, how do I look at all my extensions? Reviews. Yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, it looks like that's Adobe, but it just doesn't work. <laughs> just a bummer. Splash game emulator. Uh, 
it might be easier to go, not go down that path. Oh no, this is the recharged version. I don't want to play the recharged version. Flash too. Oh no, this might work. How do I play? What is? What the hell is this? Oh. Oh, this is like the OG. Ah, I see how I see how I could get that movement to work, but it just would be too complicated for this shit. Oh, okay, so What I wanted to do was like, oh, you can't even, you don't even have that option. Okay, well, I can test that right now. I, I legitimately already think that mine is more fun. So, okay. I don't know, that, that, like, this is pretty whack. <laughs> but thank, I'm glad I got to play that. Um, okay. Oh, don't look at that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's cool. That's, that's basically everything. Hey man. Hey no. Uh, Alright, we got a game. I mean I feel like I should give you the option to destroy your own cities. But maybe the city should check if it's a player explosion? I think that wouldn't be too hard to do. So we would just do the same thing we do here. City. It would say. If, and then we would just say if not, like that. So if area get parent die get player explosion. If not get parent die area explosion, die. Okay, so die if if it's not a player explosion, and now you can't blow up your own cities. There we go. I like that. I think it's I think the bomb is actually pretty fair. You really have to like hit it to get it. Cool. I mean, let's fix I'm gonna clean up these airs and then I think it's I think we're good. That's used there. Where? Yes, that's that we need to do, but we're not going to do today. Um, but that is all the core mechanics of missile command. Shit. Uh, okay, that's yeah. We've got bases, bombs, killer satellites, cities, smart bombs. Missile command, which each representing one of the three bases that you control. Crosses. Okay, so we got that missiles. Yeah, we have everything. Okay, cool. I mean, I can literally take these exactly and do that. So this is really awesome, this site, Arcade Classics. But that's cool. We have knocked out all of these things. 
and made them all behave. Launching what we know are smart bombs. Unless he wants a precise shot, smart bombs can simply move around oncoming defense missiles. Yeah, well right now mine don't move around, they run away from, but I think I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with the AI I have included in the smart bombs. They're honestly the most fun part of the game right now for me. Damn it, am I gonna get the, nope, okay. It's a fun game, it's a fun game, you know what I mean? I mean, there's definitely, do I wanna make these um, lines a little better? You betcha. But um, I totally could, and it wouldn't be tremendously difficult. But I think it would be for, okay, yeah. It would be for a beginner. I think a lot of this is actually probably beyond a beginner, which is uh, kind of the point. The point is to, I should really just, so I'm gonna have, to, I'm probably gonna have to simplify the game as it is already. So you can see that he dodged it, which is interesting. Oopsies. And right there. Right there. So he'll dodge that. Ooh, nice. So I think I think that's fun. I think those bombs are really fun. Um, so they fall a little slower, but they can dodge. And that's that's how they're fun. So that's the game so far. Those are all the core mechanics. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and stream again and make the levels, the HUD, uh, and a title screen and just make sure that there is a full gameplay loop. Uh, I'll also implement save games and high scores and stuff like that. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a record breaking stream for me in terms of how long I've done it and how, how many people have, have watched. Uh, and I think I've picked up quite a few subscribers. So thank you guys so much for watching. There's a lot more to come. Uh, I should be putting out a series on uh, how to make this in a lot more detail for beginners. Everything should be cleaned up, simplified, and much more broken down soon. Uh, probably, hmm, I'll, I'll probably start making that one in a few weeks. Not a few weeks, probably like two weeks. Uh, I would like to finish my intro to Godot for absolute non-coders first. I'm currently five episodes in, and I think I'd like to get at least 10 episodes done before I start working on this. And I'm gonna release all those at once as like a bulk resource course package. So that's the idea for that. And then tomorrow, I'm trying to get done how to make editor plugins um, like I have made in a lot of my games because I think that it's something that the docs don't cover very well. It's super handy and is also very intimidating um, because it's like, oh, I, I can't write a plugin for this awesome engine. Like, how can I do that? I promise you, like, if you can make this game, you can write a plugin for your own engine. So uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with our teaser and uh, have a great day.